Hello, hello. Okay, so now my video isn't working. So you tell me if you can see me and hear me. Because it looks like I have audio going out now. But now my... My Logitech, where are you? <laughs> Where's my camera? Can you all hear me? Yeah, I'm trying to um, figure out my um, my camera's dead all of a sudden. And I thought I had... Okay. I want to know... If something updated, because now my webcam's dead. But we have sound. I mean, if you can't see me, I'm not going to cry about this one, but it's a little strange. Let's see if somehow we trashed our... Somehow it fried that, but you can hear me. That's good. You can see the desktop. Yeah, I just I unplugged it and plugged it back in. Okay, I am only seeing YouTube. Is there anyone on here on Twitch? and or Facebook, just so we know that, um, no. yeah, my analytics. My camera isn't working all of a sudden. There are my analytics, but that USB is working. But look, it's not showing my other two drives. Whatever just updated or whatever just trashed my USB drivers or something like that. Let's see if we can get the camera working again though. I'll do without the drives. Not like you all are really Super inspired to see my pretty face. I think I just got Windows updated or something. I feel like I've been uh, fisted by technology. Okay, I see 26 people out there. Is there anyone on Facebook or Twitch? Can you tell me if you can hear me or see me? Because I'm only seeing one thing from one person. Once again, that's a YouTube person. Hey, hey. Here, let's start ZBrush at least. I'm going to try this one more time and see if we can get the camera working. If not, screw it. You can hear me. So is that there is no one on YouTube? I mean, on Twitch and or <laughs> well no that would not be pretty you're right um okay 
Okay. So, no one, no one on YouTube, I mean, Twitch or Facebook can hear me or see me. Because all I am seeing is responses from, from, um, Something's weird with the video stuff. It won't even end. Look at that. Mm. Well, it appears that um, something weird happened with the video. I tried to install the new software. And... Uh, that's not working but it also won't go away ah, Jesus it's so funny this was working 10 minutes ago okay there we go so on Facebook I'm cutting in and out I can't I don't have video so I can't tell what my lag is Okay, well, whatever. Okay, well, I don't know what to tell you. Everything was working. I rebooted. I came back, and now everything is in chaos. I don't understand. But this is the way of technology. This is what we get to do. And as I said... I seriously doubt seeing my face is a big deal, so I think we can probably just forget my face and uh, we will just continue on as if everything is working fine. <laughs> well, I can't show you, but I have these really cool um, 13 millimeter meteorite spheres. So I want to make um, some rings that are sort of like pearls and uh, just do it uh, with the meteorite, you know, instead of a pearl. They're pretty cool. So, um, I can't believe how expensive meteorite is. These are not cheap. Um, which one is this? I thought it told me what meteorite it is. It was one of the African ones. Normally they give you the name, but... So we're going to build... You hear that? That's registration stuff. That really do? That's a USB registration thing. Okay, let's try this one more time. Logitech Capture. Let's see if it does what it's supposed to do. That boo do 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 makes me nuts. We'll just leave it alone for right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a ring. Oh, I have to push edit. We're going to make a ring around um, these spheres. Hey, Louise. Oh, I know I'm working on it. Log hey, okay, so that's that. All right, that's good. So now, now we can go to here, video capture device. There we go. Look at that. Ta-da! Okay. That's that. I guess we need to save. Bring that up to there. We can shrink that some. 
Now that's extra wide angle. I wonder if we can change the... Uh... No. It's interesting. This is wider angle now. All right. Well, whatever. There it is. You can see me now. Woo! <laughs> Okay. Oh, my nose. All right. You can see me. You can hear me, right? On Facebook, can you hear me and see me? Are we cutting out still? Is everything okay? Holy hell, this is such a nightmare. <laughs> I don't think I've ever streamed where it's not drama or something. It takes forever to get sorted out. No, actually, um, this is the new Dokiwear glove that has the support in it, and it's nice. Um, they sent me one last week, and um, yeah, no, it it's nice. So, once again, thanks to Dokiwear. I don't know. Thought I'd give it a shot, and they have them without it. <laughs> Right? The ones without it. Come on, you. So if you don't want them, they have them where it, it's just that. But it's nice because it's flannel there. And uh, so with or without wrist support, I guess. Yeah, that's their their new version too is nice. I like it quite a bit. Okay, 13 millimeter. Oh, wait. So now I can show you meteorites. Can you? Mm -hmm. hmm. right. So meteorite spheres. Can you see them? Something like that. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's make a sphere. Mm, my sinuses have been weird. Let me just divide it. That's close enough. That's lumpy. Maybe there is a reason to do it here. Yeah, that keeps it from getting lumpy. That's interesting. Hmm. All right. Slider 2 subtool. Make sure all is turned off. Slider 2 subtools. And we have one millimeter here. I want this to be 13 mil. Resize subtool. Boop. Slider 2 subtool, 13 mil. Okay, so that's the size of our meteor sphere. Okay, so we are looking at the front of it. So what we are going to do is, I'm going to go into Lightbox. Now we have um, Ringmaster here. But unless you start with Ringmaster, um, it can change this. It'll come in as a new ZPR, so it resets the scene. But if you come in, sometimes it doesn't understand scene scale. Um, so it's often easier to make sure that you're getting scene scale. And I have these tools, so um, there's that. Hey, Ian. Um, so I just go to tools. I go to jewelry tools. Oh, by the way, I did, um, I made a link for the interface. And I also have a link for the brushes. 
but I have a link to um, Sakaki's um, Gumroad because within my brushes, I have a few of his brushes. So on his Gumroad thing, um, so if you download my interface and brushes, I would appreciate it if you went to uh, Sakaki's um, uh, uh, his Gumroad and give him a couple dollars, you know, donate to him. He doesn't charge for him, you know, on his gum road, it's zero. So it's not like I'm cutting into money that he's making, but I would appreciate if you would donate a few bucks to him for the brushes because, and you can download the full set of brushes there and you get armatures and all kinds of stuff, but he's an incredibly talented artist and I've been using his brushes for years. And um, yeah, if you download my thing, I would truly appreciate it if you donate it to his gum road thing. Um, so I will actually where's notepad oh um, I wonder if it saved it when we rebooted because I said no who needs that <laughs> nope it did not save it okay um, here let's do this Here is his gum road. And then I have a Dropbox. Now someone should warn me if um, me going to my Dropbox, if you can see anything here, which would completely lead to me getting hacked, which would really make me sad. Um, <laughs> But uh, let's see. Downloads for stream. Share. Copy link. Okay, boom. Boop. That is the Dropbox link. Let me put it here because we'll probably need this later. And then this is his Gumroad link. So that is a couple versions of my interface. I think I tried to make it smaller um, because once again, I have a big workspace. And so for those of you who don't know, if you only see like this much of my um, interface, it's because I have a different screen resolution than you do. Um, so all you have to do is come up here and you see the arrow. If you hold down control, you can move these around. So you can see even down here, I have it because normally I have this open for the stream here. Um, I have it slid over this way. So you can see that I don't, I have some stuff right here that's not in my thing. I just grab anywhere here where I can see that arrow, hold down control, and you can put stuff. What is that? <laughs> I don't know why that's there. Sneaky little bugger. Um, so you can see that um, all you have to do, is, and it works on these as well. So you can stockpile these things and get a ton of crap in them and if you're doing things like rendering, you can have all your rendering stuff down here and just slide different menus around and um, you can create some pretty cool interfaces. Uh, rings by size. And you see I have these set up as, as Z tools so um, uh, I can just bring them in on anything. So I'm gonna make a ring for me, how's that? We'll do it on Let's do a 12 and a half. One of my middle fingers there. We'll just go with that. A pin ring. All right, so something's not in the center. Frame. Something's wrong. Twenty-five, twenty-five, nine. No. Okay, 
my ball did not become sliders to subtool. Yep, that's not 13. I don't know what I did there. <laughs> Slider resize subtool. Okay, that's a bit more realistic. Um, this is the 21 inch um, or 22, whatever the hell it is, 22 inch um, Wacom Cintiq, but I have it set at pretty good resolution. Hold on, let's, uh, it is, Three thousand forty by twenty one sixty. Right. So that's the natural, um, or that's the the pixel size of my screen is three eight forty by twenty one sixty. Actually, I just started. I'm going to go much later than this. <laughs> I started eight. We just had a few problems, so we're just kind of getting started. I, um, I swear to God, I am absolutely incompetent when it comes to the. I don't know why. All right, come on, catch up. What's going on here? We have some weird things happening. See, I don't know why that's doing that either. Here we can. Nope, that's not doing it. Okay, whatever. I do not have answers. Jesus. Pain in the butt is what it is. Okay, there we go. Lots of YouTube people tonight. That's cool. Yeah, of course. Sorry it took me so long. I, The problem is I figured that I kept trying to compress it, and sadly, just how I have my stuff pulled out, it's really hard to compress. Um, but I think what you'll find is you'll use, you won't use things that I do. And so um, uh, I imagine you can edit it. But I would just suggest buying a big Cintiq. That's the best way to deal with my interface, I think. <laughs> Why, thank you, Bob. Oh, you know what? My drives, I had it on my drives, and my drives aren't... aren't. I'm having a USB issue here. Um, that's why I had to reboot, because my camera wasn't working. And I've just tried to plug in my drives, so... I'll have to do it, not next week, because next week's critiques. So once again, everybody, if you want to upload models to the critique thing, um, yeah, we'll do it the first week of January. I'll have it set up and I'll show you. Um, I, I had it with me. I just, I'm having drive issues and, well, I'm having USB port issues, obviously. It's weird. I don't know why I have such USB hub problems right now. My machine at home, I you hear that gliddy biddy and like I lose everything for like five minutes. And when that happens a few times a day or mm, a few times an hour, it gets really frustrating. But I don't know what's going on. It's very frustrating. Hey. Um, all right. So just to make sure is there someone on youtube and someone on twitch I, I don't mean youtube i mean twitch and facebook oh there's a there's a, a twitch is there someone on facebook because all these seem to be coming in on youtube which is odd i mean just normally the percentages are far lower on youtube <laughs> hey I started on MySpace. Actually, it was crazy. I was really, really banging it on MySpace. It was before the uh, um, 
the uh, what do you call it the crash in 2008 but I had like 2.3 million followers on MySpace uh, and and then there was a glitch my account disappeared and they were like oh sorry you'll have to start over I'm like uh, that was years what do you mean I have to start over so I said screw them and went to Facebook little did I know Facebook would just outright screw us and not care so Yeah, and then the then the crash hit and <laughs> everything went to shit. Yeah, that was 2008 was a rough year for me, I'll tell you what. Small businesses that were screwed horribly. This was one. Boop, 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 boop. So like I said, I have these um, 13 millimeter meteorites. They're so cool. And they're actually etched really well. So uh, I'm going to design a couple of things around this. So I thought, you know, let's do a sort of men's pearl set ring. Oh, look what I bought on you. Hold on. This is exciting, actually. Um, eBay. My eBay. <laughs> right I've been looking at Shogun Warriors but hold on uh, no where's my eBay I probably really shouldn't do these should I because it shows everything I've done um, come on my eBay purchase history look at this this is a good one because it's nice and oval shaped. Isn't that awesome? God, I love these things. These are the old Victorian ones. And look at how nice and oval shaped that is. I'm going to make a big old ring out of the glass eye. <laughs> I made a few eyeball rings um, in the ex Japan Hide world, but uh, I really, the. Because those are pre-made glass eyes. Those are turn-of-the-century um, prosthetic eyes. God, they're gorgeous. They're hand-blown. They're pretty sexy. Right? Come on. That's going to be very cool. <laughs> All righty, so... Everybody wants to see how we do our block up. Well, this is how we start. And I'm just going to go Z Modeler. Let's turn on our. Nope. Uh oh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. I'm like hallucinating here. X, A, and Z, right? Yep. Yeah. We're just going to give ourselves a little more geometry here. Just thinking of the framing I want. Okay. What is that? That is... On Y axis, we're dealing with 25.7. Everybody go buy a caliper. So that's not too big. Didn't think it was, but it's always good to check. <laughs> Someone accusing me of being high? It's not very nice. Alrighty. So 
So I do most of my blackouts in um, Z Modeler. No, I do all kinds of weird stuff. I do a lot of furniture. I do toys. I do anything I want. I mean, I'm pretty much... <laughs> Um, I've been, uh, I've been working on a handful of, uh, toys and stuff that I want to do and well, you name it, I'll do it. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy futzing around. It's cool. It's good humor. But no, I have no, um, I have no, I mean, I've been doing jewelry, you know, for the last 15 years, but I didn't start out in jewelry. So, um, no, I do all kinds of stuff. Ooh, that was the wrong thing. This might not work. Oh, oh, that was painless. Look at that. Often that's not painless. Often you get weird things. You just have to go in and do them by uh, hand. I'm just kind of roughly getting a view here. Once again, this is block up, so it doesn't matter. I'm just kind of planning where I want things to go. showing I think so we'll keep that hear that that's drives registering that's USB weirdness is it possible to turn off the silhouette yeah it's uh, it's in your preferences here let's see I can't remember Mm. It has a bunch of settings. Actually, you can. I don't know where it is. I don't remember where it is. I can dig it up, but I like it. I don't know. I, I try to teach my students to look at your shape and form all the time. So just having it as a constant sort of reference for silhouette, I find it super useful and often I'll drag it out big but um, you know it doesn't bother me I like it um, but yeah I don't remember exactly where it is because I, I don't turn it on and off so I don't remember from the beta demo because like you can change the color Because it has a pretty good menu. Because you can change the contrasts and. Um, sorry, that's one we're gonna have to look up. <laughs> oh no, that is super weird. Why we got that? Okay. This has turned into poo geometry already. My block up is poo. Uh-oh, what happened down here? Oh. 
block up his poo. Under thumbnail. Oh yeah, there it is. Thank you. I couldn't remember what it was called. And you can turn it on and off here. Because like, see there, it's now an image. It's not just a silhouette. But I keep it, so. <laughs> I guess we all have our issues, right? Okay. Uh, that is completely a shame. I don't, I don't like how this worked. You can see it kind of came down here. Like, I don't know why it went all the way down there. That was strange. Wait, hold on. Let's try that again and see if... Well, that worked out better at least. We have too much geometry down here, but I'm not going to cry about it right now. Okay, now let's make a couple decisions. Okay, that looks okay. So we are going to go bridge. Now, often um, bridge and symmetry doesn't particularly care for each other too much. So you want to be careful and just make sure your bridge, when you're doing it with symmetry, that it's working. Sometimes you just have to do it um, individually to polygons. How oh, there's a little click in here, it's driving me nuts. Um, Right. And let's see where it would seem to work okay actually. Nope, you see what I mean? They didn't join there. So these are all things. So instead of bridging that, you just use Z modeler um, and Q mesh and drag it up. There you go. Yeah, I use a lot of brush. I mean, there are a lot of brushes because some of those are my insert multi mesh brushes, and I haven't really edited my brushes in a while. There's things in there I never use, but I just kept adding. So, yeah, you get a broad spectrum of stuff. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> You'll see how organized my mind is, I think. I think that might be okay. Let me get rid of those. I don't want those there. Oops. Hmm. Well, isn't that weird? All right, fine. They're great. <laughs> so, yeah. As you can see, I don't particularly care. 
this geometry is a little wonky to begin with or anyway so I have this odd feeling that I'm going to be altering some geometry here so if I'm going to have to remesh anyway I'm not going to stress about it I'm going to hmm that's interesting why do we have an extra line in there see that extra line I do not know where that came from it appears neither does it okay and now I'm just deciding where I'm gonna have holes because I don't want this to be solid I want there to be sort of a wrapping or a weaving sort of thing you know my kind of weavy stuff so we're just looking around seeing seeing what we're seeing yes exactly that's very important ZBrush because the second you think you know what that brush is going to do I think you're going to be incredibly disappointed honestly because <laughs> I think I know what's happening every once in a while and it just doesn't work that way there we go All right. You know, let's do this as well. I kind of like the idea of having boop, ba -doop. another ring. down here and that just gives us kind of an another place to build interest I want feet nope that's okay I want it flat out no, we do want to rotate that around. There we go. I want the flat side out. And then I want, nope. Fewer. That's better. Well, I mean, I use Z-Modeler every day for my block up. I, I find that it's, I mean, I don't know what you mean inaccurate. It's as accurate as anything can be. Um, you just have to learn kind of how to deal with it. You know, I mean, I used, um, I used uh, Moto for years, you know, before Z-Modeler. And once Z-Modeler came in, I really don't, there are very very few times that I leave ZBrush to do modeling anymore um, I don't I don't I don't have many problems with it I don't are you not gonna do that for me I mean it's it all depends on the tools you use you know I mean some people are just that is because that is not center. look at that look at that yeah that's because I didn't make that symmetrical Oops. So let's do this. Split masked. We're just going to mirror and weld Z. Can't 
can't say I understand why that happened, but whatever. Actually, I want that gone anyway. There we go. Merge down. I mean, I find blocking up with Z modelers really fast, but I really. I spend almost no time in block up. I I don't want block up doing my work for me. I want to um, you know, I'm going to spend as ooh, I uh spend as little time and block up as really as I can. Those aren't symmetrical. There it goes starting things in the wrong place again. Cause I'm talking and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. That's the issue here. Oh no, this will be able to be molded when I'm done. Without a doubt. I mean, you can have overhangs and undercuts when you're molding. You just have to be careful about where you put them. Because it just means you're going to have to cut your mold to deal with it, you know. And, ooh. And that's not hard. I mean, especially the, I mean, this isn't, I'm not, um, You know, this isn't, um, oh, look at that. Um, there's not going to be anything here that's going to be so overwhelming that it couldn't be cast for sure. I think that's close enough for block up. We'll probably do some other like little veiny things because I want it to be a little bit more like a men's signet ring, you know. So we're going to divide that board boy up. Okay, like that. And now we will start sculpting. Hey, Vichar. Clay tubes. For some reason, this keeps. I want that to be 40 minutes, not 20 minutes. Okay. So how is everyone doing? Is everyone prepared and ready for Christmas? Did we all get our shopping done? Any, everybody got big plans for the holidays? I've, trust me, I've made things that are a lot more horrible than this that we can mold. I mean, yeah, you, you know, you're going to need an experienced mold cutter. But uh, no, none of, I mean, this isn't too radically hard. I mean, because a lot of the stuff, literally, all you're doing is slitting the mold. So as long as it's where you're splitting that, it's thick enough to 
um, hold that um, in, you're fine. Tony said he might be watching here in a little while. If we, if Tony checks in, you can ask him. But also, I mean, in the day of, in the world of printing, you know, you can always just print them in different sizes too. So if it's just one style, you're not necessarily trapped into molding every piece. No, it's good. It's crazy. I mean, just being out on the road today, I went to buy some water and I just saw um, Walmart, Home Depot, and the other little shop. They have a huge parking lot and it was full. I was just like, oh my God, I cannot even imagine going in there right now. I don't know what the hell I'd be like. Wah. Crowds of lunatics. But I was told you can get a 55 inch TV for 289. I'm like, wow, that's actually pretty cheap. <laughs> it's like, hmm, maybe it's worth going to Walmart for a TV for 289. Shit. I don't know. I remember when 20 inch monitors were 200 bucks. I'm sure you can still find a $200 20 inch monitor actually now eh. well, let's see this is definitely gonna get some changes I'm a little underwhelmed with how this is going I don't like my air spaces but that's okay we can we can work our way through it it's sad when I'm this is just a little too thin for a men's ring. It's a little anemic. You want a more robust profile from the top. Or let me rephrase it. I want a more robust profile from the top. Um, well, pinch points are really how the geometry is set up and that's why I really like to start with Z modeler because I really control where let me see let's lower this resolution and see if I have any obvious ones in here um, well no this isn't that bad but like You know, often you'll get geometry where, well, here, let's see if we can do it this way. Duplicate. Uh, da -da 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 -da, Z remesher. Let's turn this down. What in the hell is that beeping noise? It's something in there. It might be there. Sorry, my OCD. I, I, these little beep. Me. It made me nuts. All right. Z remesher is too good these days. Okay, hold on. Let's undo that. And... Hmm. Well, that right there could become one. Let's see. Yeah, see, when you get these stars, often um, they can become weird. Let's see. Z remesher is doing too good a job on me. Yeah, no, it's not going to pinch. Um, well, as we're going, I'll see if I can identify one. Normally it's in the block up or your base geometry. You get a weird set of stars that all join together. Um, 
and you get weird flow points and that's when you z remesh but obviously z remesh is doing too good for me to show you so uh, that didn't help Are you talking to me? Oh no, you're talking about Adobe. Sorry, I'm like, what? Oh yeah, I don't watch TV, so it would be a silly purchase for me. I have, uh, there's no reason for me to buy a TV. I mean, the, the TV I watch literally is me sitting at the computer i don't if i'm if i'm watching a device uh i should be working is sort of how my uh my subconscious works so i don't i don't i don't have a um expansive viewing surely not enough for tv I mean, I sit at my computer all day, every day. And if I'm going to be in front of a device, my brain says I need to be working, not sitting around watching stupid crap that's just going to piss me off, probably. I don't know, I worked in the film industry for a long time. And when you start to see just cheesy shortcuts and stuff, it's annoying. Even though I will say, um, I watched... Um, some of the expanse and i don't know if you've read the books the books are actually pretty good and so i thought they did actually a really good job of i mean you know i think there are eight books now um so you know there's a lot of uh there's definitely a lot of material for a uh for a um uh a series um, and I thought they did a good job. What I saw was, I mean, pretty dead on the books. And, um, you know, I mean, for TV, it's awesome. I just love that TV has so much better uh, budgets, you know, Netflix and Prime and them. I think, didn't they say that Netflix is now the third largest film company in the world? that blows me away but here here whatever as long as they make good stuff who cares i watched uh, my friend is the uh, production designer on the mandalorian so i've been watching that because he's a badass he's been a badass forever and he's one of the nicest people in the world he's awesome and I have a bunch of friends working on it. And so I was like, okay, I'll watch Mandalorian. So I watched that. And then uh, oh, I watched C. That was okay. I mean, I mean, you know, it's good. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I've really... I like the, I guess there's a series called For All Mankind or something like that that's like, the uh, space race never ended and like the moon or i guess the russians got to the moon first or something i haven't seen it but it sounds good because i'm a space geek you know i was born in 69 so when you're born the year they land on the moon you know you're you grow up in the world of uh, space so i was always a big space geek that's the one thing i always thought was funny about Moon, lander, moon landing deniers is they're always talking they're like oh well you know and they only they always talk about the first moon landing you know they're like oh look you know it's too dark when he's coming down the ladder and oh look there are lights shining in different directions and they're always talking about 
the one moon landing and you're like you do know there were like I think 12 people have landed on the moon. So you had four missions or six. Is it 12? Is it eight or 12? I can't remember. So, so that four to six missions. Uh, so you didn't have one landing you had to fake. You had to fake you know, four to six of them. It's just like people. The boys is the superhero one. Someone else told me that was good. Um, I, I think, is it called Patriot? Uh, where the guy's sort of like the the burnout CIA guy who gets a job. And the the trailer, or the, the what do you call it? The, it starts with a P. The first one, you know, the let's give this a shot one. I can't, it starts with a P. What's it called? Not a premiere. The pilot. <laughs> the pilot for that is hysterical. I mean, he's doing folk singing in Liechtenstein about how he was involved in like the secret ops area. <laughs> it's like, you can't do that, you idiot. It was pretty funny. But I haven't seen any of the... I guess the series got picked up and I haven't seen any of those. But the... Uh, the pilot was funnier than hell. What? Yeah, no, we've we've been to the moon more than once, my friend. Um, yeah. So. The sea was pretty good. I like the premise. It's interesting. And, you know, they didn't do anything that really made me angry. Like, a lot of time, Tony and I talk about it a lot. Because we're both story geeks. And it's just like, you know, when you break the rules of the world, you know, you can do anything. I don't care what it is, you know. You can set up rules to a world that are anything. And as long as you abide by the rules of the world, I'm down with it. But the second you start setting up rules and then you break it for easy. Um... <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I, how many men landed on it? It's either eight or 12. Huh? Twelve. Yeah, that's what I thought. Twelve men have walked on the moon. I came out with twelve pretty robustly, and then I was like, oh, yeah, I think it's twelve. <laughs> As a little kid, what do you want? I remember watching it when I was a kid, though. We were little. And, you know, oh my God, that's all there was. Yeah, I'm not too happy with this. Let's go back. Where are we? Let's go back to this guy, come back here. Underwhelmed is what that was called. Yeah, I thought it was 12. I just, my memory's an abortion, so I don't, uh, when I think I know something, it's often better for me to uh, look it up and make sure that I'm not being a complete ding-dong about things, but I thought it was 6 to 12, so we're going to do this a different way. Woohoo! We're going to try something different.
Let's get rid of these guys. Oh, here, let's just hail. Let's just go back to the beginning. There we go. This is another thing you'll notice. I am not afraid of starting over. I have no problem starting over. You get something going, you had something in your mind. I thought it was going to be a little bit more of like a cross. It didn't read that way. This is too high, so I have to think of something else. What? I didn't know anything about it. Um, I am someone who would register my name to do that. I, I love space, but... I'm going to let them do one or two first because I remember what happened with the Mercury missions. <laughs> let them sort out. Let them sort a few things out before uh, I, I, I put my name on the list. What was it? Someone asked uh, uh, Elon Musk if he wanted to go. He was like, I'm not leaving Earth. Are you crazy? <laughs> he was like, hell no, am I getting in one of those things? No, I got I got a good gig here. We'll keep that. I, I was just peeing myself laughing. I was like, there you go. Good old Elon. He's like, screw that, yo. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I mean I, I I do think that, you know, as the continuation of a species it only makes sense the space and also i think i think the space missions really inspired people you know i think they inspired humanity in a lot of ways um and i think that's important but um yeah i don't know i i i, I love that other countries are doing it now you know because india has a space program china's landed on the moon twice now um, not with people, with drones, but they've landed on the moon twice. And it, it's really funny, I, like the debate on whether there should be a man, it should be manned moon missions or if it should all be drones. I don't know. I think there's something to sending people. I know it's a lot more expensive, but I think there's something to sending people into space, not just drones. Um no, no, that's just it's just because I want to go. <laughs> um. No, that's cool. I don't think they'd send me. I think they'd say you're fat and old and you'll die. But uh, I don't know. I think we should stop sending physicists up there and start sending a couple of artists. I think you'll get a different perspective on things. Um, yeah, like I said, I did not necessarily that, say that I'm ready to go up tomorrow. <laughs> I took pictures of my casting this morning since you were asking last week. I cured in water in the microwave instead of the cure light. Um, all right, I would still... So here's the issue with any of that is that if you're just using UV, and I get the microwave does heat, um, but... I think that just, and we're actually looking, I'm trying to see if we can find um, a pre-made vacuum oven that can do the pressure that we need to do. Cause you want it below three bars, I guess. I was just talking to James Binion about this and seeing if we can find an oven that is pre-made that we can get, we'll obviously have to replace the gauge or see if they'll replace the gauge. Um, a pre-made oven that'll work because the the quality of heat and vacuum versus UV is dramatic because if you're doing UV you're cooking the skin 
and all that ex that's risen is trapped inside. So when you do your burnout, you get that orange peel um, uh, surface degradation from the resin coming out and aggressing your investment. So um, we're trying to figure out a solution that one is repeatable because he has one, but it's like built out of part of a nuclear submarine and an oven that was made like 300 years ago or so. I mean, Binion's brilliant and he just makes things happen, but uh, that's not the best answer for everyone <laughs> because he'd have to find things in Jimmy Riggum for everyone and that's not going to happen. So, um, yeah, it's something that we're actively trying to think about or I'm actively trying to think about, and he's willing to help. <laughs> well, you know, the affordability thing is tricky because in all reality, I think that, you know, Form Labs and that $4,000 spectrum is really, I mean, that's damn low. And the thing is, is, you know, everyone keeps telling me about printers that are $300 and printers that are da, 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 whatever. And I mean, that's cool. You know, I just think that the problem is you need expensive lasers. I mean, because the more resolution you get, it's the better your laser is. And so, you know, there's no such thing as a $300 printer with a really good laser in it, which means you're not going to get re great resolution out of a $300 printer, blah, blah, blah. But um, I don't know. It'll be very fascinating to see. I'm very hopeful. Um, yeah, bigger print ranges. I mean, I really want to get my hands on one of the Form Labs um, XL ones. They're supposed to come out like the first quarter, I think. Um, I just like because I print a bunch of crap and so the ability to print cool stuff you know I just because like I said I I have intention I find that printing is really cool and I like to do it and I like to do it for everything and um, yeah I think uh, <laughs> I think that uh, the Form Labs XL is pretty damn sexy, honestly. What's going on here? Why isn't that X and Z? Am I not centered in the world? No, this is not symmetrical. Oh well. See, this is when I don't pay attention. <laughs> you have to have the right amount of numbers to make these symmetrical, and I was paying no attention. That's okay. I don't particularly care at this moment. We are going to try a different process of this here. No, but I do look forward to um, what comes. I mean, let's face it, there's some exciting, you know, there's just some really cool stuff going on. And at this point, no one's going to stop. You know what I mean? It's not like all right we got it but i think the next paradigm shift is going to have to be in laser technology honestly um like the concept of doing the 4k led um that's interesting i just um i don't i've never had a bunch of my parts run on the led printers so i can't speak to that you know uh, what's the cobalt or the chrome or the starts with a C but like you have to lease those they don't even sell them to you or something I can't think of what the deal with those are but there was something weird about them and I mean I saw some of the prints and they're okay but they don't really have a good uh, uh, castable that I remember I mean you know we're dealing with even a few months my poor brain isn't going to remember too much but um, I don't know. It's going to be fascinating to see for sure uh, what happens next. I, I look forward to it. It's exciting stuff.
Let's do this. Split masked. Oops. Let's grab these here. Let us go W. Go to the center of the world and we'll do this. Hmm. Okay, we'll do this. And then we will mirror Z. Hmm. Let us do that again. Hey. You are a problem, aren't you? Out of my way, fool. Yeah, but every, I mean, you know, I mean, their resins aren't that much more expensive than any of the other professional resins. So it's not, I wouldn't say that they're out there necessarily hacking you on the resins. There are cheaper resins in the world, I'm sure. But I mean, you know, it's not Envision Tech. Envision Tech's much worse as far as that goes. Um. I mean, at the end of the day, it really comes down to what you're using your printer for. I mean, if you're just, if you're a hobbyist printer and, you know, that's what you're doing, then that's cool. It doesn't matter much because, you know, I mean, there are people who are still making things off FDM that, you know, they're having great results because that's what they want. I mean, an FDM printer was completely useless to me unless they completely changed their technology which I don't see happening anytime soon. You know what I mean? So, I mean, usage, because, you know, I hear people talk about, you know, that they think $3,000 for a printer is very expensive. And, I mean, you know, I guess it could be viewed that way. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, If you can sell a few hundred dollars rings, like if you can sell a ring for a few hundred bucks, then you can do your own printing. <sighs> That's a damn trap. Sorry, that. Okay, this is making me nuts. You guys. I found out what that click was. That dry was trying to register. It was like, skip, 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 skip. I'm like, Whoa. sorry, my my OCD doesn't allow me to deal with things like that very well. <laughs> you know, and you know, I hear people, and they're like, oh, Tomas, you know, you're misguided. Blah. And yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm looking for a professional tool, and you know. There's no question that Form Labs is a professional tool. You know, B9 is a professional tool. The Envision Tech is a professional tool. Um, and they all produce work that is viable, you know, for, you know, manufacturing. So when I talk about printers, I'm talking about things that you can buy and you can run your business off of it, you know. And so I don't, I think that in some ways there are things that people want from a printer that are not realistic in my world. You know, I, I mean, I need a printer to be able to do certain things, right? And so um, 
a lot of that comes down to just what is your usage and what's your needs you know the reason i like the form labs um one it prints very nicely um it like any other machine has learning curves you know you have to learn how to use it a little bit um, but the amount of money so i guess having been in i've been using zbrush for 15 years i was in it a couple years before that so being here for like 16 well 2003 16 years i guess um you know back when we started printers were expensive i mean they were twenty thousand to two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, a big Envision Tech with a small lens package is two hundred thousand dollars. You're starting out SolidScape is low twenties, and they go up into the forties. So you know, a three thousand dollar printer that can compete with those, legitimately compete with those, is mind blowing. The other thing is, is I've seen a lot of printer companies come and go, and like you really start to judge companies by how many rounds of funding they get. And I'm not saying there's not some spectacular technology out there. It's just, is it derivative of someone else's? Are they going to get sued? Is that going to be something that's going to provide your service? And, you know, if you're dumping, you know, even four grand on something, you want to make sure that it's going to be there in a couple of years. And, um, you know, Forum Labs just got, I think, their third or fourth round of funding. They have hundreds of millions of dollars of funding and they're not going anywhere. Um, and that's another important thing to look at if you're a professional or if you're making your money off of that because if something breaks, you're in the middle of a process. Oh, well, hell, what are we going to do? You know, it's just, um, I, I think that that's a big deal, you know. Yeah, Shapeways, but they're sending all of their casting to someone else now. I mean, yes, they have the printers, but Shapeways isn't a jewelry company. I guess it's becoming more and more one without a doubt because they realize that's becoming, especially because getting affordable casting in this country is nigh impossible. So I'll give them credit. I've seen parts that are better than before, but, um, you know, they were never a jewelry company. They were just there to... You know, they were just a service bureau for anything. And, um, you know, jewelry just happens to be in need. And they are definitely uh, becoming better. Um, and to be fair, I've not had a piece cast from them in years. Um, the, the last piece I had cast from them was ridiculous. I mean, it was pathetic. But I'm demanding. I mean... You know, I'm expecting a certain level of detail and a certain level of professionalism that they just, they can't afford to do. And they're not cheap. You know, you're paying as much there as you are at a lot of other places. So I don't necessarily know that Shapeways is the best place in the world to go, but I did see someone else's parts that they said was from Shapeways, and I was rather impressed. And that was only a couple months old. Um, but Shapeways is not a jewelry company. I mean, finding a good caster and develop a, a relationship with them is the best way to get your jewelry done without a doubt. Well, I don't, I don't know that there's any other business model with printers. I mean, I kind of disagree with you comics. I think that the technology is not developing that fast. The thing is, is that with SLAs, the technology is about, I mean, any, so like, you know, this whole thing about, oh, a 25 micron Z step. If you get good screws, right, you can get a good Z step. It's purely mechanical, right? It's just how accurate is your thread on the up down? And you can get very accurate. You spend a little bit more money on the part and, you know, you get new rails and it, you can get, and so, you know, they're, you can get five micron Z steps, but it's the XY detail that really is the big deal. So 
that is completely dependent on the crispness and the power of the UV light that's coming up. So that's either if it's the uh, digital projectors, you know, it's the resolution and brightness of that projector. If it's the LEDs, it's the crispness, the brightness of that LED. I think LED is promising because, you know, they can get very detailed. You know, 4K is pretty tight. I don't know micron-wise how tight it is. Um, with lasers, you know, it comes down to having a more powerful laser allows you to make the laser smaller as it's doing its burn through. And so I think there has to be a laser technology or lens technology that allows for more accurate, for smaller laser without it being so powerful that it's scoring your plate or whatever. And, you know, it's tricky. I think it's the laser technology that's really holding the SLA back because, uh, you know, end of the day, is it a big enough industry to invest in the hard science to make those things jump? And, you know, 3D printing all started in the dental industry, really. I mean, what these desktop printers and stuff, it really came out of the dental industry. And so you need an industry that's big enough, that has enough seats, that you can sell enough of these things where you can make that initial investment or those tertiary investments pay off. And, um, you know, there just aren't that many jewelers in the world. So the needs of what we are doing are definitely secondary compared to most manufacturing, you know. So um, we're there. We're coming. It's just where is that technology and where is the paradigm shift in the manufacturing? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it comes down to who has the most money for research and development, you know. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, about the key. Yeah, but their quality sucks. I mean... <laughs> You know, yeah, they were good. The price was good, but I mean, for jewelry, it was garbage. I mean, it was garbage. It, and so, you know, and I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what other model there is. I mean, you say you don't begrudge the Formlabs model. I don't know that there's any 3D printer system that is different other than car, cobalt or carbon. Cobalt, I think, maybe. It starts with C. They had something where you didn't own the machine ever. You just leased it or something. There was something weird about it where I was like, what? And I think they wanted like $80,000 for that printer. And I was just like, <laughs> are you kidding me? I mean, yeah, it's the fastest printer in the world, but so what? You know, anytime you see these people and all their demo models are just half millimeter wire cages, who cares? The cheapest print in the world can do that. That's not impressive. It's it's your surface details that become what's important with, well, at least for jewelry printing. Yeah, and there, that's true. A lot of it does have to do with software as well as hardware. I mean, just the supporting softwares. Um, supporting software is a big deal. Um, I really, I, actually, Solus's it's it's not quite automated enough to be easy which is sad because they're i love how they um their uh their supporting system is actually quite interesting so instead of just coming up and one support going to the thing it'll come up and do four supports so you have like a tenth of a millimeter, four tenth of a millimeter supports instead of one half millimeter support. So you get, sorry, oh, the, the uh, barometer's changing my nose. It's just killing me. Um, and it produces some really good, really interesting um, 
uh, supports. My big problem with Solus is the 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 build plate's just too small. It's worthless to me. I can't say it's worthless. I just didn't. I don't do enough small stuff to justify. I know a lot of people who have them as second printers and who are very happy with them. Um, I just, sadly, I'm, I'm a size whore. I need something where I can print one of my big rings and it's not going to take, you know, it'll actually take it. And sadly, that's not working. Tomas. Tomas. And, you know, like I said, I haven't had the opportunity to get my hands on some of these <clears throat> newer printers that, you know, are super cheap and do whatever. But, you know, I'm, I'm not just looking for a price point. I'm looking for a certain consistency and model that I don't have to worry about. And, you know, if you're smart with all this stuff, you can, I mean, you know, there's... You can, what do you say, uh, open source your resins on the form labs um, and some of these others. Uh, I just, I don't know how to do it. I've been perfectly content with the, with the um, resins that they offer. And honestly, you know, a few hundred bucks for, um, for a resin doesn't bother me. I mean, that's not... Yeah, I mean, when you get into 3D systems, you know, the ProJets materials and some of the Envision Tech material and stuff like that, it's it's not that expensive. Are there people out there making cheaper resins? I'm sure there are. But, you know, like I said, once again, I'm kind of shooting for a certain quality of product that I can depend on, and that's it's a little trickier sadly than I'd like it to be <laughs> mm, yeah who cares and well actually, let's see what we get look at that close that to spit on thing of beauty a wonder to behold That's the wrong button. That's why that's not working. You know, I, once again, it just, so much of it comes down to needs. You know, what do you need your thing to do, you know? And sadly, I'm obsessive, compulsive, horribly detailed, and um, it's not easy to get away with things that are affordable, sadly. <laughs> Oh no, Formlabs great. I mean, I, I like their software. I'm just saying that Solus' software is pretty damn sexy. Like I said, it doesn't it doesn't use well. I mean, the interface isn't as easy as Formlabs is. I think if you know nothing about printing, you can buy a Formlabs and print tomorrow, and you're going to be fine. You're going to be able to print. Um, for some of the others. I think that sadly you're going to have a lot of failures because if you don't know about how to print, I think that some of the others have much bigger pitfalls that you can get into for success rates, you know. I think. All right. Why don't we start there? W, Q, no, W, X, center, remesh by union, delete lower, remesh by union. We might get some pinches out of this one. Uh, let's see. 
So Hamakwa, what what do you think is different about? I'm just curious because what do you think that's different about Form Labs as um, business model to other 3D printer models? I mean, I think that all of them, you know, you buy their printer and then, you know, they're really making money off the ex expendables. Um, I don't know anyone who does it different than that. Um, So we're gonna Z-remesh this because this is all weird, right? We have these weird joints and stuff. So, Z-remesh. <clears throat> and I tend to Z-remesh a couple times because see how we have this seam here that's obviously gonna have more geometry in it. Z-remesher often tries to keep that geometry and I don't want to. So, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, see how it tried to keep that crease. There's a little bit more geometry there. And so I'll actually lower the poly count. Z remesh again. That's not bad. Lower the poly count. And I'll now turn on symmetry because I want it to be symmetrical X and Z. And now Z remesh. And you'll see we have center lines now, front and back. No big pinch lines. And we're at 2000. That's an okay place to start. I like to start a little lower than that. I wonder if we can get that. No, I'm just asking, um, well, why that is, is it's only been a couple years that, you know, for a few grand, you can have a printer that does cool stuff. I mean, you gotta understand, I mean, the affordable printers up to this point have been FDM printers. And FDM printers are garbage. You know, where pe people want to adapt is being able to, you know, print this out and it looks like this, not that it has these huge step lines to it. So, you know, we finally got to the point where, and I guess there's some printers that are, you know, $500 or whatever, or $300 even. And, you know, if they're printing even 50 microns, a true 50 microns, that's good enough for most people. Your next problem is, is, well, what are you going to print? So now you have to know um, software because, like, what are the free sites? Yegi and uh, there's another one that's sort of like Shapeways, but it's not. I mean, the words like Shapeways, I can't think. But there are a few free sites out there. But, you know, the promise is you can print whatever's in your mind. Well, sadly, you need to learn how to make models at that point. And well, then you made models and then you need to learn how to support models or build them where they're print. And I, I don't think it's a, a push button system yet. And um, yeah, I don't I don't I don't think the population. Uh, I don't I don't think it's there yet. You know, there are some companies in Europe and a couple in Japan that are offering replacement parts on their, uh, let's say, washing machines and things like that, where you can print, you know, the plate or whatever, or you can print new knobs. Or Now, that's cool, you know, but there aren't a lot of them because, well, namely, they have licensed, you know, uh, repair people, and they have licensed parts that you're going to buy, and part of their business model is paying for those repairs and stuff. So, you know, the whole, oh, I'm going to repair my whatever the hell it is. And, you know, the system, there's there's just not enough infrastructure for universal adoption for this. Because, honestly, there, you know, there aren't enough cool models that are free, you know. I mean, or you've got to go learn how to do it. And let's face it, a lot of people can't.
Well, yeah, but I mean, that's not the printer. That's not the printer's business model. That's manufacturer's business models. You know, to say, oh, yeah, well, here, you know, just print this. You have to understand that you're completely annihilating a system that's been there for as long as products have been there. And, you know, a lot of these people, those service contracts and then licensing those service contracts are huge money for these people. And so now you're talking about, oh, well, it'd be easy for me to print part 83727. But in doing that, you've just relinquished control over a lot of things. And unless you're designing your parts where they clip on and off very easily, where you don't take apart your part, your piece to switch things, well, now you have people taking things apart who have no understanding on how to take things apart. And, you know, are you going to be responsible if they take it apart? Where does the warranty lie? What the, you know, it's, it's a complete reimagination of the system. And it's also a complete reimagination of the development of product. Because, yes, there are aesthetic things that you could design that could change easily. But... Because like the, the original smart car was a collaboration between smart and Mercedes. And um, they actually had like a, a little Allen key thing that released the panels of the doors or of the car. You could change all of the panels just by key lock. And you could buy different color sets of panels. And you could just come in and pop the color and you change the color of your car and stuff. And they'd be pretty affordable. And then it just got silly and... Uh, I think Mercedes dropped out of it and sold the motoring part of it off or whatever it was. But, um, you know, when you allow the monkey to go in and just change things, you are now culpable because you've given them permission to change things. So who's, who's culpable for the replacement prices and all of that? You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the printing industry that's the issue. It's the reimagining of product design and product sells you know i mean that's a big step and you know why it works on star trek and shit like that is because you're dealing with evolved societies where profit isn't the issue and you know the day we get where we are post money then those things will become much easier but then you're still dealing with culpability when a dumbass takes something apart and puts it back together Okay, well, you sold me this part and gave me directions, so am I responsible or are you? You know, I, I think that's a much bigger leap than just having printers that are affordable that can do it. Hey, Paolo. Formware. Mm. Oh, hi, Raloon. Sorry, I you were in the middle there. Do I do I do my own casting? Um, well, for a long time, I've had access to a shop that was tuned to my stuff. I don't do cast. I'm a I'm a designer. I'm a sculptor. I'm not really. Um, uh, a caster tony rodriguez has been the the jeweler who is my uh, business partner and sort of the dude who was like no we need to make this happen this is absurd that because i can't tell you how many people are like oh yeah i'll cast your, one sprue i'll cast your work blah 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 then no one could and now you know with vacuum overpressure machines and you know riachi vacuum overpressure waxing machines and you know, technology is caught up where it's much easier to make work as detailed as mine was. But, um, yeah, that that is a new thing in the grand scheme of things, I, I assure you. <laughs> no, no, our laws are not caught up for that. And to be deadly honest, it's very tricky. I mean, I have fights all the time about, you know, what is intellectual property in the world of 3D printing. And... Um, you know, there's, there are going to have to be some very large paradigm shifts with how people think about object. 
And then it's how do people monetize their designs, you know, and people who are not designers are like, well, you know, it's on the internet, it's free, it should be for everyone. And I mean, that's cool, I get it. But some of us have spent a lot of time and energy and money to get as good as we are to the place where we can make things that are des desirable and efficiently useful. And, you know, how do you do that? Because I'll tell you what, when you copy my work and sell it as your own, that pisses me off. And so there, until we are a post money world where profit isn't an issue, where you have, you know, you're not worrying about ever paying for rent and you're not worrying about ever paying for health care and, um, you know, like sci-fi socialism, you're not going to have easy answers for any of this because I'll tell you what, you know, too many people are using technology to live off of other people's work. And um, that's going to be a bugabear for a long time, I'll tell you, because, you know, how do you deal with it? I don't have the answers. Well, my first answer is stop stealing my work. That's, that's my first answer. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, um, they're difficult issues. They're definitely difficult issues. I mean, there's big debate on whether capitalism does work. I mean, I hear about it working a lot, but I don't know. I see people starving and I see people, you know, working for people who are making, you know, for, you know, even in the robber baron days, I think the average was like, you know, 60 times what your average worker made, where now it's like 400 times the disparity of CEOs versus, um, um, the worker and you know this goes in waves and uh, eventually the monkey gets pissed off about being used to make you know the eight people wealthy and you know then they riot and things go ugly and then you know but I, I've yet to see any evidence that capitalism is this ultimate and I'm not like a socialist or anything I mean I'm not it's not like I, I think that there's a system that works better, but to say capitalism works, I think is that's a bold statement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends on what do you mean by works. You know, it sure as hell isn't helping society. Um, you know, I think the the comp the countries that are you know voted the best places to live and who take care of their people the most are pseudo-socialistic. I mean, the Netherlands is obviously a capitalistic economy, but it has socialistic tendencies. Uh, and I don't think you'll meet anyone from the Netherlands as a bitching about their, you know, living. They have high taxes, but they get a lot. You know, the quality of living is high. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have big answers to those. All I know is our system doesn't work. Anyone who thinks our system works is wealthy because if you are not wealthy, I don't think our system works at all. yeah, I don't know what that post-profit society is. Well, I mean, you know, it's funny. The post-profit society is where robotics takes over most of the manual labor and such. And, and then, you know, you, you no longer have people needing to work because most of that work is automated. But then, you, you know, you get into other issues 
like baby farming and <laughs> CRISPR and genetics. And, you know, I, I, I don't know that there are any easy answers right now. I do not know. No, I don't think Pixelogic will ever make their own 3D printing machine. Pixelogic is a very small team. And um, Ulfer, because of their pricing schemes and how they, um, they don't monetize the user very much, you know, anyone who, you know, I spent $670 for this program is something in that range, like 650, 680, something like that. And I've had it for 16 years and I've never paid for an upgrade. That's not a company that's really trying to monetize me, if you know what I mean. So they don't have just this huge influx of money. I was also told that there are probably three and a half million pirated copies of ZBrush out there. And I mean, think about that. Think about how much money is not going into research and development. And for a company that is as small as ZBrush is, you got to remember ZBrush is still basically a family company. Um, you know, you just you don't have those huge profit margins to throw around. Now, do I think that is there a future possibility where someone like uh, let's just say Form Labs, you know, Form Labs decides to have an official partnership with ZBrush or something like that. Uh, and don't, that's, I'm just throwing that out there. That has nothing to do with anything. Um, you know, I can see something like that. I just don't see, I don't see Pixelogic generating enough excess money to be able to fund an entire research and development department on a 3D printer. I don't see it. At least not right now. I mean, I just don't think their business model allows for that kind of monetary flexibility. I mean, you know, what's important to them is that we have a good experience is in that, oh, no, no, that's not what I want it. Escape. No. What the hell is a multi-insert tool anyway? That's even the wrong button. I don't know what I just did. I don't even know what that's supposed to be a mirror brush. Yeah, exactly. Something like ah shit. I did, does anyone know what multi insert is? <laughs> that's supposed to be a mirror brush. And it is and it is in, well, poo. Yeah, stop that. Um, okay, well, oh, oh, I see. No, oh, we don't need that, okay. Whenever ZBrush completely freezes up and you push things and you can't escape, go down and look because you probably pushed open or save and it won't do anything while that second window is open. Um, so I have these 13 millimeter meteorite spheres. They are super cool. Um, and I'm just putzing around I want I want to I want a ring where I can wear a 13 millimeter meteorite sphere so I'm just futzing and we're talking oh crap I guess I have to keep that on huh <laughs> hmm okay let's try that again <laughs> Did it come back on? Oh, I got a lag there, hold on. All right, there it is. All right, we'll have to work that out in a bit.
you know, it's it's one of the things that honestly I really love and respect and feel like I am part of a family when I deal with ZBrush is, I mean, they don't monetize any of us like most people do. I mean, they're not, their goal is not to make a buck off of us. I mean, yes, obviously, you know, they're trying to make profit, but I think there's a very big difference in, you know, creating a product that they can be proud of and that that their users want. And I mean, like Matrix, hell, I think it was Matrix 5 or Matrix 6. I can't remember which one. I think it was before 6. And, you know, their upgrades are like 1500 bucks every year that you had to buy an upgrade. And the one upgrade, they just changed the menu colors and that at one thing, it was just like, you are kidding me. And they had no interest in their, in like now, good God, now it's owned by Stoller and they completely eliminated their user forums. And now they want you to buy a completely different program. And people have, you know, you got to think 16 years, if I had kept, you know, that's well over $20,000 invested in that program. And the people who bought it are just like, man, all right, we bought a different thing. So here, you know, we're not going to support this anymore. And you, da, da, da. and that's never going to happen with ZBrush. And you know how I know that's never going to happen with ZBrush? Because we still have this little marker menu right here. <laughs> and we have a couple things that are like, nobody uses except for five people who still use it as a 2.5. Um, why there's an edit button instead of not edit button because there are 10 people on the planet that still use it as a two and a half d program and they refuse to remove those features and that's because he cares about their users you know it is an incredibly conscientious group of people and i'm not saying that because i'm sitting here streaming i'm sitting here streaming because i believe that you know what i mean because you know if i were doing this for someone else well, I would do this for, I do do this for Wacom as well. I feel very, Wacom's a very good company to me. And um, they're weird. <laughs> they're goofy. But I, I feel that they, I have no complaints at all with how I've been treated by them over the last 16 years. Actually, I've owned one of their products even longer than that. But you know, I think that they're, once again, an incredibly good group of people who care about making a good product. And, you know, everyone has complaints about people. You know, I've heard ZBrush doesn't have support. I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. But let me tell you, they, you know, yeah, you know, it's, it's a handful of people. I mean, it's not like there are hundreds of people working for ZBrush. So, yeah, every once in a while we get to wait. Guess what? I get to wait. We all get to wait. But... You know, it's like they're making the product better for us. So I don't, I don't, I don't begrudge them their business model. Uh, I can't believe it a lot of the times where I'm just, I don't, I don't, not charging for upgrades is crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy talk. Good morning. Yeah, no, it's it, yeah, it, and it's funny because once you all start using ZBrush and you become, it's a little trickier now. I have to admit because. There are so many more people using it that the um, the forums are no longer really a place for people to communicate um, because your posts disappear so quick. Because when I first started, it was a much smaller community and it was a really dedicated, cool community. So everyone shared information. And because the ethos that Ulfer has tried to create, I think, I mean, I'm not speaking for him. This is me speaking as a, a, a 
a user, right? You know, I'm not, I don't work for ZBrush or anything. Um, but as a user, the ethos that Ulfer has tried to create, I think, is really much about learning and creating and developing tools that are good for the people using his product. And I think that he got a core group of people in who really believe in that. And I mean, I remember calling Paul before he was married and had kids. I'd I text Paul at like 2.30 in the morning. What the hell? And I'd get a text back. Oh, well, it was this, you know. But it, it can't be that relationship anymore because there are a lot more people using, obviously. But, you know, when you realize how cool this community is, you know, like the ZBrush Summit's incredible because you go there and you have people who've won Oscars and people who start at Weta and people, you know, and you have people who've never even bought ZBrush and are there because their friend dragged them along. And the thing that happens is there are these cool presentations and the presentations are awesome, but it's really about everyone standing around and talking and sharing lunch and having a, and I don't care who you are and I don't care who you want to be with. There's no one there who won't talk to you. There's no one there who won't answer questions. There's no one there who won't share information. And that's a very, especially in the world of technology and, uh, that's an unheard of thing. And it's something that honestly I treasure. I, I, I think it's the people are the real power behind ZBrush because they care. And I can't say that for a lot of companies. And, um, yeah, it's, it was funny cause someone asked, I think it was at one of the summits. Someone asked, it was me and a couple of other people, uh, a couple of the other streamers and they were like oh you know does zbrush pay you all to do this and we're like no 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 they they asked us to do this and you know now people ask to do it and they're like oh well you know they didn't understand why and it's like we do this because we believe in zbrush and we do this because we want to share information to get other people comfortable in using something that has become part of our lives. I mean, ZBrush is, I spend more time with ZBrush than I do any person in my life, you know, by, by far. And, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredible group of people. And I wish the forums were a little smaller because, you know, we could really converse and have good conversation and, I mean, you know, just my numbers on Zebra show the, a little bit more about that. And that's, so I'm in the, uh, I, I, they changed the forum, so I don't know if, how it works anymore. But I was in the, the ZBrush most popular thing because I had over half a million views. And that's because I was the first person to ever get a jewelry model out of ZBrush and print it and manufactured. And so at the time, there was a huge dialogue about how this happened and then, and, and um, it was awesome because I had questions all the time and people were always there to answer them. And when the forums didn't go by so quick, um, you could really dig in, you know, uh, but now they're just something you post something and it's not on the view anymore. And I guess if you follow streams and stuff, that's a way to do it or follow threads or whatever. But um, yeah, the cup, like, let's put it this way. There's no way in the world I would ever get half a million views today because, you know, I'm not a big renderer and, you know, some of the priorities of the forums have changed. Um, I used to be on top shelf quite a bit. <laughs> now I don't render even close enough to get on top shelf. <laughs> Yeah, but when you say similar products, I would argue that, you know, I, I haven't seen any of the new products, but their pressure and angle, uh, their pressure angle and rotation sensitivity is twice what any of your other competitors really is. And um, I can't say that with authority right now because it's been a long time since I looked at their competitors. But you know, if you're just talking about competitors in the sense of they make a 
touch tablet or are we talking about actual competitors because it's like oh i'm a honda owner and i can't believe that ferrari charges so much more than a honda well those are two those aren't competing machines you know it's like like this computer is probably what it's i don't even know how much these things are let's say six thousand bucks you know 25 okay let's say five thousand bucks what i don't know how much the computer costs compared to how much the screen costs but let's say you know 2500 bucks for each so that's five thousand bucks so you're like oh that's an expensive computer well this isn't an expensive computer my computer at home i paid twelve thousand dollars for seven years ago now to be fair it's still going you know but I can't compare the performance of the two because even the seven-year-old machine that I paid $12,000 for outperforms this machine dramatically. And it's seven-year-old technology. I tra- I changed a video card but uh, <laughs> and a couple cooling systems, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, but, you know, are those actually competing computers? And so, you know, I would just... I would actually look at the performance of those. And once again, if you're not doing ZBrush and you're not, you know, where pressure and angle sensitivity isn't a big deal, or, you know, if, I don't mean this negatively, but I mean like if you're malleting hand sculpting where you're not doing subtle changes and if you're surfacing because you're sculpting things that are more bold, um, well then who cares? You know, I mean, but, I don't know, I'm anal. And having 2,800 steps of pressure sensitivity compared to 8,000 steps of pressure sensitivity, I can tell. And that's not a joke. I can tell. I can tell the difference between this monitor and mine at home. And this is four times the sensitivity as the one I have at home. And that's why I want one of the 32s for at home. <laughs> because the pressure sensitivity is dramatically different and um that's important to me so i don't until that pressure sensitivity is on par i i don't view them as competitors if that makes sense yeah they cost but i mean (laughs) You know, it's like Erwan chairs are expensive. I bought my Herman Miller chair 22 years ago for about 1100 bucks. But I've had that chair for 22 years and nothing's ever happened to it. You know, I mean, I, I still have it. It's 22 years old and literally it works like the day I bought it. Um, I've never had a problem with one of my Cintiqs and I bought a Cintiq I mean when they first came out literally within the few months of when they first came out and when is that let's see I mean that was late 90s I'm sure um No. Um, no, that's 27 QHD. It did not, it came out before. Uh, no, I'm talking about the 21 UX. Let's do this. I think it was 21UX, if I'm not mistaken. Twenty ten. Hmm. Did they have one before that? They must have. It's been out for a long time, but whatever. Um. I can't remember. I can't remember my own name, let alone. But 
I bought a I bought a Cintiq before I owned a damn computer because I was like, oh nope, I need that. I'm gonna need that. That's what I need. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Oh my god, that's funny. Sorry, I'm getting heckled by. <laughs> The heckling continues. Um, yeah, you know, it, it really comes down to, you know, once again, what's important to you as far as the um, equipment, you know? Because there are some people who just, I mean, they're not going to use it to the point that it's worth spending that money. And you're right. If you can get something for a thousand dollars cheaper or five hundred dollars cheaper or whatever it is but i would argue that you know yeah i don't i've never owned one of the other machines so i can't really talk about it i can just say that i do not regret a single penny i've ever spent on a wacom or zbrush for that matter I mean, but, you know, they, they captured the market they wanted. And that was the professional illustrators and professional CAD work. You know, I mean, yes, if they sold them for 20 bucks, they'd sell hundreds of millions of them, you know, but that's not their market. You know, that's why they have the tablets. Um, You know, I mean, just the bamboo or whatever. I mean, you can get one of those for like 90 bucks. You know, I think I, I don't even know what the little ones are anymore. I don't know if they're bamboos or whatever's, but you know, I mean, you can buy a tablet for a couple hundred bucks. I think there's even one that's like, wasn't there a a, a ZBrush core and a tablet for like 150 bucks special for a while? I mean, you know. If you want a Cintiq, you're paying for, you know, they, they're they not trying to make the cheapest product in the world. And it shows, because like I said, I had mine forever. I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, Tony still has his 21 UX. Um, you know, so like, what market are they hunting for? What is it that they're trying to accomplish? Because, you know, just making the most affordable thing isn't necessarily the market share they are looking for. I don't know a professional, and I'm saying that very clearly, I don't know a professional illustrator, ZBrush user, that is using something other than a Wacom. Um, and I think that says something. And I'm sure you can find one, you know, there's always somebody, but yeah, you know, You know, I mean, that'd be like saying, you know, Herman Miller would sell more chairs if they didn't make them, you know, thousands of dollars. But if there's anything that I think Herman Miller is a prime example of how that is definitely not true, because I don't know one major corporation that doesn't buy hundreds of <laughs> of Airwan chairs for their employees. I mean, that's why you can buy an Erwan size B anywhere in this country for three to five hundred dollars and it's because there are so many of them in the market 
in why there's so many of them in the market is they are incredibly good chairs. So, you know, once again, what are you trying to get, you know? I don't I, you would have bought a Wacom if you could have demoed it I mean the, I mean I guess you know <laughs> I mean, you got a product that you like and that's cool I I, I think it, it I don't know it, it I'm sure you could find some place to sit down with the Cintiq I don't know Like I said, I I haven't used the other products. I'm I'm not really I'm not going to say that you know they're not good. I don't know enough about them. I'm just saying you know for 20 years. They've done me no harm. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All right, you know what? I know I need that, don't I? All right, let's do this. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. <laughs> Be right back. I'm going to grab a cup of coffee, fill my water, and use the restroom. See you in a second. <laughs>
found some crackers. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Blue bag. <clears throat> so let's see. Well, you set up your sensitivity here. Pin settings and see current pressure and as you can see it, come on so see current pressure click maximum tip feel you set it up here and you can see that I have this set very low I'm very barely touching this I mean barely touching the screen and see how I'm getting something and then that's me pressing hard so that comes down to your tip feel like if it's firm now I'm pressing hard if it's soft you can see your maximum you're maxing out really quick right but see when you're just touching you're halfway there so I want it stiffer than that so now it can be soft and then press and get so you can get a lot of that you can customize it and tune it in and so that's how your brush right because often i want just real subtle because i'm trying to find something so i don't want a lot of pressure sensitivity but then i'll come back in and i want to fill it up and you want more pressure so that's sort of the the gist of it I guess but when I get into really high res what's funny is you, the higher res you get the the less the more sensitive the surface becomes it's interesting Yeah, that's a completely different issue. Wacom's been around long enough that anyone who has anything that's pressure sensitive is designed to work with a Wacom. And I don't know what the driver issues are on the other ones, but I can see where that could become a big problem because I want to say that like the Corel product. So the other thing about Wacom that's a little different is that there's actually a little chip in the tip and so this is touching a chip where a lot of the other ones um there isn't necessarily a chip in the this without a battery that was one of the other things so wacom really invented this technology and so they're they're leagues ahead of a lot of other people but for the corel products zbrush doesn't support it but so you know you have angle sensitivity you have pressure sensitivity but on some of the illustration programs there's also rotation sensitivity so if you're drawing and you're rotating your brush it'll do that fan so there, there's a lot of stuff that 
that Wacom does that a lot of the other ones actually they just don't support that technology. So there's, you know, there's a lot of research and development that goes into this. It's, you know, it's it's good shit. But yeah, I I can't. Like I said, I can't really speak to the other companies because I've never used, I've never even used one. I I bought a Cintiq so long ago that there weren't other options then and now i've never had a reason not to uh um like to change i guess is what i'm saying hey tony are you still watching i don't know if he saw the eye i want to see if he saw the Yeah, sadly, what I really wanted to work on tonight isn't here. I'm having weird USB driver things, and that really is frustrating. I'm going to blame Windows. Because <laughs> Windows updates, I think, are just designed to break your usability. <laughs> I don't think they update anything. It's a conspiracy between Zuckerberg and Windows to just screw my life. I'm sorry, my friend. I cannot read that. I have to figure that out. <laughs> so do you just never update your your um, Windows? I mean, it's not like I'm, oh God, I have to stay on top of Windows updates. But um, how do you, how do you choose what to update or not update? Sorry, I can't see prompt my way out of a paper bag. I'm really, for someone who's made their life off of a frigging computer, I'm not uh, a powerhouse on it. <laughs> yeah. I but to be fair I don't think I've ever owned a computer where I did have issues with it. I think having issues with a computer just is just having a computer, I don't know. But I'm always I'm always getting my machines to do things they never wanted to do to begin with. I'm I guess I'm a power user in the sense of not that I know what I'm doing. It's that I force my machine to work at a red line more than most people ever dream of abusing their machines. I abuse the living sheet out of my machine. Um, <laughs> I'm horrible. But that's where, I mean, I'll tell you, that's where, once again, it's sort of, you know, like this debate with, Wacom and the debate with other things, form labs and blah, blah, blah. I have an origin PC and I'll tell you what, I asked Tony, we, we bought, we bought a box. We bought, um, a, um, come on. A Puget Systems. A Puget Systems is a good machine. But 
I'll tell you, my machine at home's uh, a um, Origin, and I had a few problems with it because I burned out the uh, liquid cooling system twice. But that was uh, <laughs> it was a completely different issue. Um, once we figured out what the issue was, um, I've had the same one for now. It's like another six years. Well, no, I mean another probably been what four years. Yeah, probably four years that it's been fine. The only thing I've replaced on it, other than two liquid cooling systems, is well, I burned out a RAM card, but that's not the machine's fault. The RAM failed, so I took the other one out. So I'm down to 64 gigs. And then um, I replaced a video card because my video card started to go out. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's still a badass. I maintained it. I put my foot on the gas every day as hard as I could. And I ran that thing at a red line every day for years. Well, actually, it's one of the sealed. It was what it's a, a uh, something frost. It's a sealed system, so it's not one you you maintain. It's supposed to be a sealed system. Cyber frost, something frost. Hell I know. Like I said, can't see prompt my way out of a paper bag. That's not my. I'm a sculptor, man. I don't know. I just don't know. But I don't know anyone who's had as much luck as I've had with that machine. Because all of the machines we bought from William Hen for William Henry. Um, have had issues of some sort or another. But uh, that origin is a badass. Yeah, it's a Corsair. <laughs> Cyberfrost, I don't know. It's a Corsair something or another. Yeah. Well... <laughs> So the problem with my uh, cooling system was when they built the machine, um, they accidentally, so there's a little knob on top that controls the LED brightness. And when they wired it, they accidentally wired one of the pumps for the cooling system to the knob. And so, you know, just moving things around and stuff, when I moved it from one place to another, I must have held it and turned the knob down. So I literally turned one of the pumps basically off to where it was just barely pumping. And I guess for liquid cooling, it's really important to keep the circulation going. So I just literally fried it. <laughs> and then when, they, when I sent that one back... Um, and it was funny because I guess it was one pump for both um, chips because I have a dual core. Um, I guess that not only did it turn down, but it uh, uh, I run my machine so much. I get they had an analyzer on it, and I run my machine so much at redlining so i my when i work i'm constantly redlining my drives and so i guess my machine was running much hotter than like just normal wear so <laughs> and then the second one that came in got stomped on in shipping and they sent me another one i mean they just sent me the cooling systems it was it was super easy um so that I mean, that wasn't really a problem. It was just a, 
a FUBU when they built it and they took care of it. They sent me a new one. They showed me exactly where to plug things in. I was like, but there's something plugged in there. And they looked at it and they sent it back and forth. They were like, oh, well, that explains why you burn this up. <laughs> Yeah, it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, you know, I guess you could call it an issue. But, I mean, I had like the three-year parts warranty on it. And when the second one blew up, it was like literally I had like four days left on my parts warranty. And they were like, oh, don't be silly. Of course, we'll deal with it. Don't worry about it. So they weren't real crab assy about the whole uh, oh it's got to be you know you've had three years screw you um it's funny so origin is from what i understand i might have this wrong but i'm pretty sure this is what i remember the guys who started origin he was like the one of the partners of alienware and when they sold Alienware to Dell, he started a new computer company. I think they're in Miami. Right on. See you later. Ah, oh, my sinuses. It's really annoying. So I found out today that I am going to be the last stream of 2019. So next Monday will be the last ZBrush live stream until after the new year. And we'll do critiques. So if anybody has anything they want critiqued, uh, make sure to send it up to my Dropbox. I think that's, oh, where's notepad? I need to write that in this here too, so let's, isn't it up there? I'm not seeing it. Does anyone have that link? I know. Dice! Ha ha! <laughs> Must make dice. Um, will you do me a favor? Paula, do you have that link? Will you upload it here? I, I don't know where it is right this second. But we might have someone who does know. Ma ha ha. Okay, so this is sitting on the finger this way, huh? If you guys haven't noticed, I have absolutely... I'm not real inspired at the moment. And I'm kind of making this for me, so I'm being persnickety. <laughs> uh... Let's just start wrapping our heads around some of this and then we'll just blow holes in it and figure out where we're going with that. How's that sound? I think that sounds like a plan. <clears throat> Good thinking, Tomas. going to work on the skull flake tonight and show you guys how to prep for 
printing, but my drive isn't working. So we're not doing that. And I tried to upload it from my home computer, and that was just taking too long. And we reboot it. Mm, I don't know if Paolo heard that. All right, hold on. So if anybody has pieces that they would like me to look at next week, that is the link to my Dropbox. Here, let's put that right here. All right. I... Okay. What do you mean normally it eats the post? I need to know things like that. If it's eating posts. What do you mean by eating the post? Why would it delete the post? What's it saying? What do you mean it deletes the post? So you don't see that link? Does that link not show up? I see it over there. Do you all not see that link? Really? Why do I see it over there? Here, let's just do it this way then. That's still reading as a link, isn't it? Crap. Um, oh, but you can see that link. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I'm slow on the uptake there, guys. Okay, cool. Tony, were you here earlier? Did you see the eyeball that I got to make an eyeball ring? I completely agree. business meeting. <laughs> um, oh, well, hold on. This is cool. <laughs> Look at that. But it's a good shape. Look, it's oval. Come on, that's going to make a cool eyeball ring. 
right? I got a an eBay gift certificate. So it's like, yeah, I know what I've been looking for for a long time that I didn't want to spend 40 bucks on. That's it. It's really cool though. It's pretty. These are all like hand blown. They're so cool. Come on, that's pretty cool. All right. No one seems to think it's as cool as I do, so. <laughs> I'll be quiet. I'll go back to my stream. Ignore me. Yeah, I think I remember that one. Oh my god, a police siren? That's crazy talk. This town is like shut down. Shahalis is not known for its uh, bang and party life, so to hear uh, sirens is pretty crazy. <laughs> Ow. Oh man. My sinuses are being wacky. So, Tony, should I make a plan to come visit you after the holidays? I haven't seen you in so long. Well, that's why it's called a plan. You tell me when. <laughs> It just can't be, uh, I have to be able to get back, obviously, before a Monday. That's my only prerequisite for the concept. That's cool. Well, it's not a race, I just... What's in New York? Sorry, I missed your... I can see yours. Mine's not. No. Oh, that's... Oh, nice. Awesome. If yes, how would you do it in ZBrush? Sorry, I'm... Apollo, I, I completely missed what you were asking. Of course, I'm always here. I'm here to help. That's the point. Usually, I try to help. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> Have a good evening or morning or whatever it is. So you didn't see the link, so Can you see that link? Other people said they could, so if you can't, I need to know.
So for anyone who's just joining us, know that you are, ple or let me rephrase that, please feel free to ask any questions about any subject. It doesn't have to be what I'm working on. Um, and I will gladly stop and help you with your issue or question. I had a, a model that I wanted to work through with you guys, but um, for some reason my drives are not showing up as drives, so that's not happening. I'm having USB issues somehow. So I might have to update my USB hub drivers or something silly like that. I hope that's not the case because that becomes an annoying issue, honestly. Am I supposed to look that up? You'd have issues with this only because these are really fine. Are these stamped? Are these die stamped? Because they're not cast. There's no way that's cast, is it? God, you know what? Pinterest is the bane of society. Well, that could be cast, I guess. But it looks like these are die stamped in sheets and then sort of assembled. Tony, you pee yourself laughing. So on Instagram, when I went to Tribal Hollywood to copy the picture of the sugar skull, showing that, because Tribal Hollywood's selling a version of it, uh, now I get in my email, I get spammed by Tribal Hollywood because I guess I looked at it. So they're like, oh, you should, you should uh, <laughs> buy it. I'm like, oh, now you're rubbing it in my face. It's like, now I'm going to actually have to call you guys. <laughs> Yeah, no, I didn't think it was cast. It looks like uh, die stamp sheets and then wire work. Because of how it's assembled. That's pretty stuff. Yeah, that's twisted wire there. Yeah, that's pretty. Very pretty. Are you asking how I would do that in ZBrush? <laughs> well, I'd probably do it the exact same way they do it. Or I would um, take my, my sheet shape Let's, yeah. Um, I think, where's my masking? Hold on. No, 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 that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on, that's too much. Ah. <coughs> OK. 
Okay. Right, let's do this one more time. Boom. That would probably. Stop it, come on. Obviously, they're using much more elegant lines. I'm just trying to give you an idea of, you know, take whatever your space is. And I would actually probably not use, ooh, that was way too thick. <laughs> I might actually, um, nah, I don't know if that'll work. I think you're stuck here. And you'd have to adjust your um, brush thickness, obviously, because this was furry, so it filled in some of those outside places. So I would use a thinner brush, actually. But then you can come in and either do this, right? Or at this point, you could... Um, Um, I think I have a rope brush. Yeah. Oh, too big. <laughs> yeah, we might want to change the draw size on that. Too small. Right. You could do something like that. You have to touch it. Before you do the next one, touch the surface so it makes that not active. And then you won't get that weird jumping that I just got there. Right, tap. You know. And then... Split hidden. And then you have your wires. Maybe something like that. It depends on if you really want the 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 wire twisty shape or if you want clean shapes. What the hell is that? Oh, <laughs> like, what is that? Um, if you're just trying to uh, no, that's not what we were looking for. Curve function delete. Um, if you don't want it to be wiry, you know, I would then no stop that. Um, I would just come in and sculpt it. If you want it to be a super consistent, you know, there are all kinds of tube brushes. Um, curve tubes. A little big. And the curved tube brushes are cleaner than a lot of like the effects brushes. You don't get a lot of, it's a well-tuned brush, so you don't get a lot of that um, breaking up that you do with some of the uh, mesh brushes. 
or rope brushes and things like that right split hidden so if you're just looking for tubes I'd probably use one of your curved brushes that help <laughs> and I mean like you know if you're dealing with a certain plane you just control you know you well this is you have to duplicate it um, duplicate and lower the res some. You don't need that much resolution to do it. Delete higher, delete lower. And now. I might not have snap on surface. you know you can do that's lovely I'm very proud of my uh, ability to make swirls here <laughs> right do you want snap to surface I, I obviously don't have this set to that but there you go delete like that do, 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 do. oops it's funny I think those little prongs are inside the the ball <clears throat> sure enough Oh, move elastic, that's the problem. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask away. I am more than willing to help you resolve any issues you have. We are not stuck on discussing the things I'm sitting here making for sure. Also, next Monday will be the last um, ZBrush live stream of the year, and it will be a critique session. So if anyone wants to participate, feel free to upload a part to 
the link I had posted up in the stream. If someone needs it, tell me. Um, and uh, feel free to post anything up there and we'll discuss it next week. In the last stream of 2019. <laughs> yes, another tool. <laughs> I use other tools for effects and, you know, special things, but really, I, I'm a clay tubes user. I use a lot of clay tubes. Oh yeah. Oh no. I, I plan to, I plan to without a doubt. I, I see, uh, I see making some dice in my future here. I asked a couple, uh, friends that I know that play role playing games, but I'll put it out there to anyone is like, can anyone think of a die that they wish they had? Like, you know, like a yes, no die or because the percentage dice are fairly new because we just used to use two ten sided. And, you know, that was sort of your one of them was the tens and the other one was the ones. And now they have percentage die that are, you know, one of the ten sided is 10, 20, 30, 40. And uh, but is there a die that, you know, like I said, like, yes, no. Something that you would use, but just no one's made one yet. Because we're going to do this. If, if there's a die that everybody has been wanting and no one's really made, let's do that too. You mean, is there a way to keep the corner sharp? I would assume so. I don't see why not. I mean, that other, that's one of the things that they're super proud of is their sharp corners. If I have one of the best mold makers in the film industry working on it, I think that we can probably figure out how to do it. Ruins are ruins something that people roll for all the time in like Dungeons and Dragons or role playing games. be fair it's been a long time since I've played a role-playing game <laughs> what have I so in college we played role-playing games for quite a while and then my last year I was pretty busy I didn't really have a lot of time to do gaming and uh, the people that I normally played with they were continuing their game and they had continued gaming as a group and I had a free weekend and uh, Dave let me roll up a character and our friend Lars Lars 
Lars would play as like a belligerent turd. And it was being a belligerent turd. You have to understand, like, you know, this is a campaign that they had been playing for a long time. And I had just come in to play for the day. You know, it wasn't really, or, you know, I'd play a couple days, but I wasn't going through this whole campaign. And Lars was just being an obstinate turd. And so I just shot him in the back of the head. And, oh, my God, he was so angry. He was like, <laughs> he tried to get Dave to, like, bring him back. And Dave was like, you know, I mean, <laughs> those are the repercussions. Oh, my God. Lars would talk to me for weeks because of that. He was so pissed off. I still can't believe that dude made like $2.3 million off a dice Kickstarter. That just shakes my head. Did that come up with something? Well, they have a lot of little ruins on this. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yes, no. Dice are something that are definitely going to have to happen in my copious free time. <laughs> we have a few things that are taking priority over dice, but...
Anybody have any questions, any issues, any things they've been having a problem with, anything they really like, anything you want to share? Anybody? Bueller? Anybody been watching anything good on TV? <laughs> Anybody getting anything really cool for Christmas? <laughs> How oh, I project everything to a new mesh. So, yeah, no problem. <clears throat> so let's say, let's duplicate this. Boop. And let us say that I really wanted spirally horns. And why I want spirally horns is because it's destructive, right? Now, whenever you use any one of these, you have to, um, it only, um, it only works in one direction. So you have to um, do it like this. Now, if you like one side more than another, this is a prime time to do it because we are going to have to um, do this anyway. We're going to have to remesh this. So. Right. So we're doing this to our mesh. And as we know, this is very destructive to meshes. Do you know what I mean by destructive? I'm not being a smart ass, I'm just being curious. Right, because look at our mesh now. Right, we can't sculpt on that. That's crap. So we're going to have to remesh this. This is a time we have to remesh. All right. So what I'm going to do, I like this side the most. Um, let's mirror and weld just to see what. Um, oop, mirror. <clears throat> no, delete lower. Oh, shit. Duplicate it. Actually, we don't have to duplicate anymore. <laughs> Silly me. Ah, it's so beautiful. We don't have to duplicate anymore. Um, see, that right there was habit. So now we are going to mirror and weld. That's not the side I wanted. So I'm going to flip mirror. Now mirror and weld. Supposedly you can hold alt and it does it the other direction, but it doesn't work for me. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, so I just don't bother doing it. So now we're symmetrical. We're where we want to be. I will now Z remesh this. And let's just go to that. Z remesh. And that should do most of it. In our remesh, we want it to get kind of close because a lot of times what can happen in the remesh if you do it low the first time like these overhangs and stuff they'll disappear and it's thinking if we get a stall it's because my cpu is using it up don't worry about it 
Mmm, blueberry crackers while we wait. <coughs> yeah, I feel that. Remember, we're at like 5.3 mil. are not working for me for some reason. That's weird. Um, I don't know what ring it is. Am I copying pasting something I shouldn't be? Oh, well, I literally, I, I hand constructed each one of those spirals and then merged them together. So that wasn't, I built the frame <clears throat> and then I wasn't using Z modeler at the time. I was using Moto. So I imported the base frame into Moto and then I did a rough block up. And just got everything laying there, divided it, sculpted it, and then merged it all together. That's how I did that one. Well, there's nothing tricky about that. I mean, that's... I'd even go as far as saying it's a crappy lion head ring that Gucci made. Yeah, I'm not too overwhelmed with that. I love it when people who have enough money to do real development make ugly crap. I had this conversation with a guy I work with and he was like, oh, I want it to look cheap. You know, I want it to look like a period patch, like a cartoon. And I'm like, the problem is, is if you don't use detail and like tight craft, it winds up looking like this. And I mean, this looks cheap as shit. I mean... It's perfectly fine. It's just, you know, one, it's Gucci. And you'd figure that if a company like that were doing something, they'd have enough pride to do it well. But, yeah, what do I know? All right, so you can still see that we have a very messy mesh here, right? So I'm actually going to lower the polygon count and Z remesh it again. See, I'm trying to avoid those points from getting too short, right? We have a little bit of weird pinching here, but I think that... I don't think it's actually in the mesh. I think it's... Is it in the mesh? No. Okay. Um, I think we're okay there. So now I got to remember that we were in there. Let's divide this up. And I want my first one to be in that half million range. Now we're going to go back here. Is that? Yeah. 
yeah we're gonna go back to right here hold down control and tap that now we're gonna come back out here and we are going to go project history and this might not get you all the way there sometimes when you do this you have to go back in and do touch-ups but that's okay I mean that's part of the process it's not a big deal all right there we go and so now we have projected to that we have a couple weird things going on here we just smooth those out and that's just because you know this was a disaster geometry right you know just smooth it out a little smooth these out just a touch do it one more time project history you can do it there we go and so you can see that we've now projected back to where we were now this is only half million so what I would do if I really let's say I really like some of the striations in that original model you know I really want to keep all of that detail I would do just a quick light smooth here right and our projection distance is a little short so that's and this has weird faces and stuff because it's twisted and destroyed so you're going to wind up with some weirdness in your projection um but divide again 1.6 project history Hold on, we're going to escape that. I'm not even going to bother doing this. We might choke out on this. This this isn't my machine at home. So projecting history with multiple million poly models can get weird sometimes. Well, it's not weird. It's, it takes all of the CPU, so my video stream lags. And so you can see that you're getting all the surface detail. Now you get a few of these over projections. Just tap those back up and in. And let's face it, you're going to come back and play with these surfaces no matter what. Or I would. Just do your little cleanups. Right. And there you've you've completely reprojected. You have a nice quad foundation, so you can get your subdivision levels. So I no longer project. I use project history because project is looking for the negative normals of the model that it's projecting to. So it's always here. Hold on. What the hell? <laughs> that was weird. Um, so this is your original model. This is the model that we've sort of smoothed out right it doesn't match exactly to the model we're projecting to 
your projection distance is this. That is how far off of the original model is it going to look for a surface. Right? So this is our model that we have. This is the model that we're projecting to. So why those weird little points happen is this. Is it's looking this distance, right? So this surface, and it's also looking, this is the other tricky thing. It's looking at the negative normal. So it's looking for this surface of the model that you are projecting to. Right? So now what we have I didn't really do a good example of this, but um, I made my projection surface a little too far out. So where these these those weird little explosions come from is that this surface is looking for a negative surface within this depth, right? So this surface right here is the closest negative normal that this surface has to look. So it'll often throw these points out here because it's just weird little points and that also happens let's say in here where it's like oh there's a negative surface so it's going to throw points back here or so you know it's like oh look I found my negative surface my negative normal but it's like oh well you know here my negative normal at this green line is actually this one over here it's not this one right so it's looking out here for that surface. So often it's like, oh, well, okay, that's close. That's close. That actually happens to be out there, you know, or whatever. So you wind up with these over projections of it trying to hunt and find. So this is project. Well, project history, it's not looking at a zone it knows that this is the shape that it's trying to go back to and then every once in a while you still will find because it's still doing this algorithmic analysis of surfaces so you'll still wind up with a few of these weird triangle things right and that's just because it's confused at what direction it's pointing and it'll shoot towards a normal that it's looking for so now with project history state as opposed to project you get much cleaner projections when you're projecting to something that it already knows where it's looking as opposed to searching um, for a negative normal so it's a cleaner projection process i find does that help did that make sense Boop. Yeah, so project versus project history. The new history tools are awesome because <clears throat> There are just so many things you can do with it. It's it's now like a, it's great because it's just like this history eraser. You can go back and only take certain points back to certain periods of time as opposed to having to take the whole thing back to that. So it's like this history eraser that's awesome. but it's still projecting it's not morphing so you still wind up with those projection artifacts so
See, so this is a prime example of what I love about history. So I know that I'm about to be doing this sort of knotting. I'm trying, I'm going to be trying to figure out my overs and unders of a surface. And I want them to obviously associate with each line. Here, where are we going? Let's start here. Hold down control, boom. And now come back up to where we were. And you can see, I want these lines to be relative to the one that's coming so I know that my curves are right. Because you want this surface to actually look like it's going to the next surface if it's going over and under. And so I'm futzing around, you know. And I'm like, well, actually, I want that to be thinner. So I want that to be my line. So now I can just drop back to my history brush. Oh, I have symmetry on. It doesn't like symmetry, so you have to do this for each one. But that's no big deal. And you can just come back in and knock that back. All right? Turn symmetry back on. Turn clay tubes back on. And now, you can knock these back down a little more. And you notice I knock the edges off of that? I don't care. Because, you know, I want these to be roughly at the same level. Right. And I want that edge to be clean, so I'm coming into this a little. And my guidelines, I know that that's there to there. I know that's there to there. And now I come back, history brush, turn symmetry off, make my brush a little smaller, come back in. I can build this right back up to where it was. Just walk around the part. No. I hadn't done this one. And you can see how once you have those surfaces located and you got them kind of where you want it, boop, go right back to it. Turn symmetry back on. Go back to clay tubes. And now you have control over, you know, where you're putting surfaces, where you're experimenting with it. And you just have so much more control now using the history as sort of a an anchor for what you're doing with the other forms. Then you know like boop, oh. You did that, but you've you're now like twenty steps in. And then you come back and look around, you're like, oh, when did I do that? Well you just go back to a point. Like I knew that this was a change, right? I'm now in that mode where I'm experimenting with what I'm going to do. So I go ahead and just hit history on it and start going. And so you have to make sure to go back a couple of things because for some reason, if you put history on the very last, like if I put, I'm on this frame, if I put history on, on this frame, it doesn't progress. Like you don't get more histories. It's weird. So you, you want to go back at least one anchor your history there and now I'm like oh, well it doesn't matter when I did that come back to my history brush turn symmetry off and boom boom 
Boom. Boom, and I can repair that at any point. And the nice thing is, is if it was before where I chose history, you just go back to where it's not there anymore, and then you hit it, and there you go. You're, you're on fire. <laughs> now we're cooking with gas, or whatever the hell that is. Turn the symmetry back on. I don't know. I think I bored everyone to sleep. I haven't heard anything from anyone in a bit. I'm losing viewership. I have to speak more radically. All right, kind and gentle folk, let's not be passing out. What's going on out there? So does anyone out there know about music rights and streaming? So let's say that um, my friend's a DJ. And well here, let's just let's use antennae for example. So on my private stream I used to listen to antennae a lot because I could play it and it didn't come up as um, you know, uh, oh, you can't play this and they silence your, uh, your um, stream. But let's say that Antennae is my buddy and he's like, oh yeah, you can, you can play my music. So how does it know if you have the rights to play that music or not? Because it flagged me off of an algorithm, obviously. Is there a way that you can get the rights to play that music and play it. What do you mean? You're... Okay, first of all, models don't just blow away. We do things to them. <laughs> so what do you mean your model just blew away? You're going to have to give me a better description than that. I got to know what you did. Stop that. I'm waiting. Gosh, guys, it's still early.
not being able to control the push of the surfaces. Well, there's no difference in how the tools work. I mean, the... I don't understand what you mean. Let's go here. Well, no, I have a history state here. Right, I've been sculpting for a while. I know where my history state is, right? It's there. I'm going to come back here. And the only thing you have to be careful of, well, symmetry. You know, it's going to go right back to where this model was. There's no pushing. It's just, it's just a recall state. It, Right, you're not actually pushing anything. You're just, it's going to go back to that state. The only thing you have to be careful about when you're doing this is you have to remember that this is not a morph. This is a, um, a projection. So as we go to the side here, you can see that it's pulling up really bad around these corners. So the key is, if you're only doing this edge, don't do it from the front. Just make sure you rotate around to where you're kind of dead on for the shape. Maybe you can send me some screenshots. I don't, I'm not quite sure I understand uh, what the, oh no, that's the wrong way. Oh, and just remember to turn symmetry back on. That's real important. I do it all the time. Where I don't do it and then I'm just like, ah! The rotating around is a big deal. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with a bunch of weird distortion. Because it's not a morph tool. It is a projection tool. And it projects to camera. So you got to make sure that, um, that you're not trying to drag through another, another surface, right? <clears throat> and I tend to put back face masking on but even with back face masking it can get weird It's funny, it was muggy, hot in here, and now it's getting chilly. <clears throat> Their heating system must turn off at some point. They don't usually have people in here this late. I think, in the whole time I've been doing this, I think there have only been two nights when I've seen people in here. This is not a busy co-op. Well, it's not a nighttime busy co-op. I have no idea what they do during the day. <clears throat> it's nice. It's a good little place. I like it. Shahalis Co-Works.
and membership here is a lot cheaper than trying to get cable at the house. <laughs> Somebody was talking to them about putting a, a 5G tower in the back of the homestead. I'm like, oh my God, I wish. That would be awesome. Getting like an undisturbed 2 gig signal. Oh yeah, that would be great. Wow. I wonder what's up. I'm not getting heckled by Shinya tonight. That's crazy. I'm worried about him. I guess it's still early. <laughs> oh, maybe they're doing holiday stuff. I guess some people actually do go to their families and such for the holidays. Here's a place that I'm going to use the history, right? Because these surfaces weren't lining up. And I really want them to look like it's connected. But it just wasn't cutting it for me. So I can just come in here and sculpt this down to what I want it to be. Hey, how we doing? So right, you can see that I'm going to sculpt this to where this plane is connected to that. It's one surface. <clears throat> if you're texturing right here, we're going to put stripes on this. I'm going to get rid of these soon enough. But right, you go and you lay your texture because you want it to be consistent under there. Mm. But now see what I did? I've changed this since the last time. So I'm going to have to change my history point. So I'm going to undo. I'm going to undo this until this line right here is where I want it to be. All right, so we're there. Hold down Control, tap that. And now we just drag this back to our beginning over here. Right? Go to my History Recall Brush, turn my off symmetry. Good, I'm glad you're doing well. <clears throat> Please feel free if you have any questions to ask away. We're definitely not committed to uh, any of the models that I'm working on at the moment. Nope. Oh, that's the wrong place to be. Let's go back to here. I move forward one here. We're just gonna do a big jump back, hold down control. There we go. Now we'll come back up. Undo that. Undo that. And right. 
and you can see I'm not being super picky about the edges there because I know that I'm going to come back in um, once I have my symmetry on and clean these up so they are symmetrical so I'm just getting that there and you can see that it doesn't now you have a pattern that's running under that and you have this back to the level that you want it to those two planes connect tightly so um, it's super powerful for things like this and now you turn symmetry back on hey spar how we doing and there you go now you have a surface that is definitely working under the other one and um, that pattern's still there and now that we have symmetry back on we'll come in and make sure that's doing what you want it to do right yeah I might have to put a shirt on it's getting nippy in here I can't decide if it's better that it's cold in here or the other night it was so hot I could barely breathe it was sweltering I guess there's no happy medium huh those of you just joining us free to ask away if you have any issues or questions do not hesitate to ask I will gladly drop any model I'm working on to address any issues you guys have Yeah, the history recalls a new feature in 2020, and it is pure sex. It is so cool. It's a good one. Because unlike before, if you find, and we've all done it, like, you know, I've been working on this forever, and then I'll turn around here, and then I'll see, you know, this big ding out of the, out of the model. Right? You're like, oh, well, when the hell did I do that? And there's no way to get rid of it. Like, let's say there was a lot of detail there. You know, there's no easy way of getting rid of it. Where now you just go back in your timeline until it's not there. Hit control, hit the little orange bar. Now that's your history anchor. And then you just sculpt away to it. Well, I'm glad the computer's running better. I'm getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that I have not reached the point where my computer's comfort is more important than mine but that is an absolute complete and utter lie <laughs> I have for quite a while shifted my environment to what my computer needs and not what I need. But luckily we're both pretty okay at 72. I think it's colder than that in here. So how many of you guys have already started your festivities? Is anyone traveling for the holidays and they're already there? Or anything interesting? I have to live my holiday traveling vicariously through you guys. So. No holiday traveling this year.
<laughs> At home, that's viable. I don't think this machine will, uh, I don't think this machine generates the kind of heat my machine at home does. It was funny, uh, I lived in this, uh, I lived in the loft, the upstairs of this, uh, my friend's house. And we had to put cardboard over the heating vent because we thought that the heat was just pumping upstairs because upstairs was hot. And, um, when I moved out, her mother was coming to stay for a while. And uh, <laughs> I had left, I'd packed everything out. And uh, they, her mom moved in and she was freezing to death upstairs. And we realized that my computer was heating that place just incredibly where <laughs> we had covered the heating vents and everything. She was like, why would you do that? It was like, cause it was hot up here. At the time, I didn't realize that my uh, my computer was such an efficient heating unit. Because where I lived before, that was pretty big. You know, I, I'm sure you felt it, but it wasn't the same, like, percentage of airflow, you know. Oh no, everything I do goes to jeweler's wax and then is cast in a vacuum over pressure casting machine. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a, a maker or craftsperson. It's like, I need, I need this stuff to be, you know, it's this, my money, I can't, there's sadly, well, not sadly, but I'm, I'm known for my surface finishes and my detail and me converting to sort of doing things sand cast. I would be, uh, I would lose a broad cross section of people who uh, like my work or buy my work for that reason. So no. And that's why it's funny because that's another reason why, like when I'm when I'm talking about like my response to printers and my response to casting machines and you know that stuff, it's like I, I have very specific need. You know, I'm I don't mean I'm a professional. I have to be able to have something that's a product that works, and you know, I'm not part of that maker world where people fiddle futz with things and make them happen and okay I, I don't have time to fiddle futz with anything it's like i have to have something that works i know it's going to work i'm not going to screw with it you know i'm not i'm not that crafty guy it's like i need something done i need it to work i need to be making any money you know the day we buy it so it's got to be understood when i'm answering some of these questions and people i get kickback where oh you know a $300 printer is great it's like yeah yeah but I don't know a $300 printer that's going to print professionally easily every time out there you know and that's why you know when I say you know $4,000 is nothing for a printer that's nothing for a professional printer that you you know you know is going to work where <clears throat> You know, hobbyists can get away with murder 
Because, well, if they have to sit down and screw with it for four days, well, who cares? That's, you know, you paid 300 bucks for it. It's great. Um, sadly, we don't have that freedom of futz. Excuse me. Once again, if there's anyone joining us new, feel free to ask any questions. I'm here for you. Those are driving me nuts. Very scratchy. Throwing things around. I mean show the other way you mean project it's just the same thing you just push well you need a secondary model um, can I ask you why you would want to use the less superior way of doing it or do you not have 2020 is that the issue No, take the time and learn it. It's the right tool. I mean, um, there's. I mean, you're you're not doing anything differently at all, other than instead of having to copy the tool. Right. Hold on. Let's get something with less resolution. Is this the tool? Hmm. Here. Let's append this out. I would say, don't be scared and learn how to do this the right way though, because there are very big advantages of having the history. And um, where did it, oh, there it is. Okay. So here are the two differences, okay? Hold on, let's smooth this out a little so we're not getting lower res, lower res, lower res. All 
I just want this to be a cleaner model so you're not getting artifacting that you don't need because uh, Okay, so this is our new model. I'm just going to throw some texture on it so you can see that we are reprojecting something. Right, so we now have some detail. We've messed up our mesh. Here, we'll just do this. Right, we got to redo our mesh. We've stretched it out. It's a worthless mesh. We duplicate it. All right, I'm going to duplicate this again. So you have a base model. Okay. The old way of doing this is you Z remesh it down. Oh, this is 7 million poly, sorry. I should have just lowered the resolution before I did this. What are you talking about? There are so many surfaces. Well, to get any, are you you mean they're separate parts, or they're just? What do you mean by surfaces in your model? You need to unify it into one mesh. It needs to be a shell before you start doing this. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with really weird projections because it's going to where it intersects is going to try to project to the shell below it. So you're going to wind up with big trenches around every scene. Is that what you're saying? <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six. About 38 second lag. Okay. So, Apollo, you've definitely heard my question. Okay. So, when you say that, are you saying that here I can put more surfaces on? Let's get rake tool. That'll give us little lines. Is this what you mean by you got more surfaces? <clears throat> Well, there, that's a lot of little lines. We'll go with that. So you have this product, hold on. 
let me uh, delete this, duplicate that, and then duplicate it again, come up here, delete that, all right, you have your base model. We have model number one, and we're going to have model number two. Ta da! Everybody's the same. So, the way to project is you take this model. I'm just going to lower it a couple resolutions and delete it higher because it doesn't matter. And you're going to Z remesh this. Right, so now we're cleaning our mesh. We're turning it back into a quad model. It completely depends on what kind of jewelry you're making. No, I would say 25 microns isn't enough, but I'm wacky OCD. I mean, I make crazy models, so... Like if you want it these lines, no, 100 microns is horrible. 100 microns is a very steppy model. You're going to see steps in a 100 micron model. Right? So we're here. That's weird. We're going to smooth that out. We're going to divide this back up so we have some resolution. Usually I'll do my first reproject in that two to 500,000 polys. Let's lower that down. That's 250,000. You now have to have another version of that model, right? So that's why we duplicated it. So we went back to our original model and we put on the eye so you can see it. Because now the old model has to be visible. The other thing I would consider doing is coming here and when we soften the model with our divisions, these corners got a little easy so i would just drag these back and in inside the model because that whole thing i was showing you about where it's looking at right just drag that stuff inside kind of smooth it out but get it inside the model and so now we're just going to look i think everybody's okay we now go project all you have to have another model open for this to happen. So you have to save a duplicate of your model, one in its original state, one in its remeshed and redivided state. Project all. I mean, if it's smooth, you know, if it's just a smooth ring, you know, 200 micons would be fine. You're going to have to polish lines off of it, but. You know, it completely depends on the um, what you're doing, you know, how detailed you're doing. So now we can turn this off for a second oh. and see if there are any places that are dramatically missing. They're not. And now I find that it's better to go ahead and smooth this down just a little bit again. Because once again, projection does not like coplanar surfaces. So it's easier just to do a quick smooth over your little detail. Divide it again. Higher res, we're at 1.4 mil. Um, I'm not gonna go all the way to seven mil only because I don't want the stream to lag, but we'll go up to, we're at 1.14. We turn on our projection again, and now we project all. And we wait for this projection. I mean, I think that depending on how good the printer is, 50 micron prints can be fine. Once again, depending on your surface detail. So when I say detail, I'm not just talking about like wire thicknesses. I'm talking about surface detail. Like if you have a lot of low 
textury stuff that's much harder to retain than here I'll show you a slide as soon as I'm done with this okay so let's turn that off so there's that there's our original there's that this is softer because I didn't go all the way back up to 7 million if you really want me to do the 7 million poly I will but so there now we're back to our projection right okay so well fuck it we might as well do it so you can actually see it so let's divide this I'm just gonna re-smooth this stuff out Actually, you know what? Here, we'll just we'll just reproject this. Right. So we bring this back on. Project all. And with any projection, you're going to need to, especially with project all you're definitely going to have to do it a few times because um, there are just little points that don't fill or sometimes the cup's not within the projection range and it's just tuning it up a little. You do it less with, um, with project history. So what I'm showing you, this isn't like doing it multiple times at different projection levels. That gives you a much cleaner, much more usable geometry because what you're doing is that you're getting everything sort of out there and then you're relaxing the stretch out of that mesh. Then you're projecting it out to the higher detail and then you're relaxing that mesh down. And as you're jumping up in detail or in divisions, when you smooth it, you're relaxing the mesh less so it's closer to the reprojection point. And so it's a logical, logical progression of reprojection. Okay, so this is this is the reprojection. No, oh, no, that's the original part. That's the reprojection, right? Pretty close. All right, so now this is the way to do project history, right? So this is where we are. I am going to Z remesh this. While this is doing this, I'm going to grab my shirt. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we have a reprojection. So now all I'm going to do is go undo, control Z. We're back to our original part. I'm going to hold down control and tap that. Now I'm going to control shift Z, go back to here. Now I'm going to divide this. Right? So this is 1.13 million. I have a history state selected. I'm here, project history. And once again, because it is looking for a defined state, not the inside surface of a different model, the projections wind up being cleaner and a little closer. You're still, I mean, if you smooth it a lot and you have you know, a big mesh chain, um, you're still going to have to do it a couple times. 
it's pretty it's pretty tight honestly boom so that is at 1.13 million let's divide it one more time and then project history You can do it. Oh, my nose hurts so bad. <laughs> Probably not appreciated, Ud this channel <laughs> takes a minute don't panic Am I back? Maybe, maybe not. Are we stalled? Can you hear me? I think we're stalled. Spar, so what is can you all hear me at all? Cool. I'm glad. Of course. Like I said, I'm here to help, man. Anything I can do. So, Spar Mouse, are you still here? Right, I know. <laughs> there we are. Ta da! So, as you can see, we've retained the detail. I mean, this is still a couple million shy of the base model. And these two are the same. Right? So there's not much difference in that. Um, it's just how it's finding the lines. So you can see that doing the history, project history as opposed to project all um, is just it's a cleaner better process in a lot of ways so don't and you have more control over what's going on um, so don't don't be gun shy about it if that makes any sense what happened oh, nothing there it is Thank you, Said. Have a good evening, man. Oh, 
I think I want a slightly longer ring. And I think I want this to get weirder, so let's do this. So did that um, did that answer your question? How to clean this type of model? Tanji, are you still here? Tanji, Tanji. If I mispronounce your name horribly, I apologize. I'm. <laughs> I will not defend my pronunciations. Anyone? Can you hear me? <laughs> Am I there? Dropbox OpenGL. Are you looking for my Dropbox address so you can put something in for next week's? Critiques? Is that is that what that message is meant to be saying? Um, when you were asked, I'm sorry, it, I've lost where I was when you wrote that. So what model are you talking about? Are you talking about this model? How to clean this model up? Is that where we're heading with that? I still have a curve active in there. I'm sorry, I was here I go again not paying attention. Was that a yes to you're here or was that a yes to what you want to learn to clean up? Sorry, fill me in and I'm more than happy to address whatever it is. All right, we're going to lower this res. I'm changing this model some, so... I'm going to completely redo it here in a minute. So I want Sculptures Pro so I can join some of these things. So we are going to, where are we at? One million, that's fine. We're going to delete higher. We're going to delete lower. W, I'm going to Dynamesh this. Make it a million. Because I'm reworking the shape because I was heading nowhere with that. Nothing. All right. All right. Oh. <laughs> okay. Accept. It's real important that you accept it, especially when you're using Dynamesh because um, I imagine a lot of times hold on, symmetry is important 
I think that, um, well, here, I'll show you. So we're going to Dynamesh within Gizmo. We're going to use the Gizmo Dynamesh. Okay, we have turned symmetry off. Come in here, and we are going to remesh by Dynamesh. We're going to drag that out. Yep. All right. So this is what not accepting does to you. All right. So we've remeshed. I hit Q. And I do some sculpting. Hold on, turn symmetry on. I do some sculpting. And I'm like, oh wow, I need to redynamesh, right? So we turn on Gizmo. I redynamesh. And look what happens. My sculpting went away. Because of how the tools within the Gizmo work, it has a history state. And um, you can see that we didn't push accept, so it went back to the last time we dynameshed. I can do this again. Grab snake hook. I really love this. This is so great. I just need to get it to dynamesh. I go back to my gizmo. I say dynamesh. Oh, what, what happened? It went back to our original state. If we hit accept, it is now reset the history state of the gizmo. So we'll come back in, remesh by Dynamesh. I'm going to grab my snake hook, turn symmetry on. I need the Dynamesh. Go to W, come in, doop, and you will note it. <laughs> Did I not push accept? Oh, I backed up. Oh. All right, hold on. <laughs> I undid. Turn symmetry off. Accept. Boom. Don't undo. Now we're going to sculpt. W, turn symmetry off, turn symmetry off, remesh by Dynamesh. And as you can see, our square is now including the whole thing. So when we Dynamesh, it's now Dynameshing everything here. So accepting's important. It is an important thing. Okay. All right. I don't know if you didn't hear me or whatever, but if you have a question, please repeat it because I think I lost my place when you asked your question. All right. And anyone, if there is anyone that has any questions, issues, please tell me because I'm more than willing to stop what I'm doing and helping you out. Okay. So now I've gotten to a point where I decided I needed to Dynamesh. So I can futz around in here for a little while because I might be doing some bridging and stuff. So I'm not just instantly getting out of Dynamesh right now. I say I don't work in Dynamesh much, and that's true, I don't. Um, but since I'm here, there's no reason to Z remesh yet because I can, because I don't know, I might be doing some bridging that I hadn't been doing. And what I mean by bridging is, let's say I want, let's 
since I've converted to a DynaMesh, I now have to kind of play around and determine if there are any things that are specifically DynaMesh that I might be using here, right? So I'm like, oh, I might bridge some more. So this is when I will do this. I'll take Snakehook. I'll turn Sculptures Pro on. And I will drag this over. Let's mask this whole thing here. Drag this over and in. So you can see that we've sort of bridged that, right? If I want it to be fatter, I'll grab inflate and just inflate it a little. Now I'll come back here and then I'll just redynamish. When you DynaMesh, it sort of closes the DynaMesh as well, or stops the DynaMesh as well. So if you're DynaMeshing from within the gizmo, you have to actually go within the gizmo and redynamesh. The slashing doesn't work. Um, and so now, accept. And you can see that this has now become, right, there's you know it it became a shell and so that's what i mean by now that i've dynameshed i need to come back in and think about things that are specifically dynameshable that i might be wanting to do right now um so i'm going to play in this mode for a little while just to see because like i said i don't have a con obviously <laughs> i don't have a concrete idea Turn Sculptures Pro off right now. Stop that. Auto. Okay. Remember to turn your symmetry back on. So now that I'm in Sculptures Pro, I mean, now that I'm in DynaMesh, I'm going to be pretty rough. I'm not going to be super detailed. I'm gonna, now that we're here, we're going to concentrate on doing some bigger moves as opposed to little finesseful ones because I'm still trying to figure out if I want to bridge or do anything specific that way. <clears throat> so now this is pretty thick, so at some point I am going to blow a hole in this so it's not solid. So I'm just going to take this up so these are kind of where I want them. We'll probably blow a hole in that. With the ring that big, I definitely want some flat surface out there so it wears flat to the finger <clears throat> and so you get good friction so it doesn't roll around off the finger. So um, you want to keep, when you get into bigger rings, you, you may want to hollow them, but you want to keep plenty of surface so when you do, so when it does touch it, it um, so when it's on your finger, it's not just rocking and sitting on the edges. You want good surface contact. Hey, Pro, how we doing? We have a very quiet uh, audience this evening. 
I don't know if everyone's rattled out because of the holidays. <laughs> What happened? My symmetry wasn't turned up. No, I must have just done it. No, but usually you have a couple people talking, so you're not just listening to me whistle to myself. <laughs> But we get quiet crowds every once in a while. It's not a big deal. It's just sad because I seriously doubt it. me yabbering to myself is very compelling. Um. Well. Do they have to be retopologized for printing? Um, yes and no. Um, I wouldn't. Say, they have to be decimated for the most part. So decimation is a form of retopology, but it's not retopologizing. If that makes any sense. Um, <clears throat> I I brought models to kind of go over. Um, prepping for printing but for some reason my USB drivers are being weird today or something's being weird with the USB and um, things are not uh, as they should be no oh, nice so there's the thing over here called Decimation Master. So before you go to printing, chances are you're going to want to decimate your model. Um, especially if you have any detail at all, you're going to need to decimate your model. So one, it's a good clean shell. Two, it's a low poly count. And three, <laughs> what kind of landscapes? It's so funny, I was just going through, um, well, a friend of mine, I had, I was staying with a friend right before I went traveling before, and uh, I left a bag at his house, and it was really just, I mean, it wasn't a lot of stuff, but um, it's funny, a lot of my hand drawing stuff was like my pencils and my eraser and things like that, and I was like, wow, I haven't drawn in forever. It has been a long time since I've done any two-dimensional art. I was never, well, when I was younger, I was much more of a, a drawer than now. But even then, sculpting was always, I mean, I've been a sculptor since I was a little kid. I wasn't a drawer who fell into sculpting. It's sculpting was all I ever, I mean, that's what I did. I was all about it, but I drew a lot more back then. D 
Do you have any links? Can you post a link to one of your landscapes, which you've been working on? If you care to. <laughs> How many of you are traveling for Christmas or have already traveled for Christmas? How many of you are wearing socks? Sinuses are rough. I'd say this place heats up pretty quick. I just turned the heater on a little and it, it's definitely coming back. Right on, we got one person as a sock wear. You go. <laughs> is that how long the lag is? Oh my God. That's tragic. No wonder no one's talking. There's like a three hour lag. Damn it. 
Anybody have anything they have questions on? Feel free to ask at any point. I will be happy to stop, transition, and work on whatever you're having issues with. I'm not wearing socks. I'm not a big sock wearer. I wear flip flops a lot. I wear a lot of flip flops. I have some nice flip flops, but still. Or Keens. I wear Keens a lot. It's funny, one Christmas in Tokyo ruined me of laced up shoes because you travel for the holidays, you do a lot of visiting and I had to take my shoes off in everybody's house. And when you're wearing boots that have to lace up and lace and lace, I was just like, oh my God. Okay, never again, screw lace up shoes. I mean, ever since <laughs> pretty much a non lace up shoe person. I have a few pairs of shoes that aren't slip-ons, but those are rare. I had a beautiful set of hiking boots that I think that my business partners kind of porked the pooch, and they brought all their shit from London but forgot mine. <laughs> so my boots are MIA. Very sad. Well, more than brushes, I use subdivision levels. That is why, um, yeah, I'll show you here in a second. So, like for edges, right, you know, these are all pretty loose. For edges, I find SK clay tubes, or SK trim polish to be the brush I use the most if I'm brushing edges on, and I use it to get edges, because it retains, a lot of your uh, flattens and polishes roll over edges where here you can see the SK trim um, it kind of retains the edges right it um, it's not aggressive on the edge so if I'm doing something where I want a sharp edge for sure I'll use the SK trim polish but you know you're talking about surfaces like these and getting them smooth no oh, shit I'm in I'm in Dynamesh um, here let's go over here right here let's okay so here we we'll, let's do a little bit of this real quick because this has my subdivision levels Right, and you know, I'm always doing crap like this to define my planes. And I'm never really super, you know, picky. So here, we'll turn these into clean planes here. All right, so. I'm happy with that block up. I will lower my resolution a little. And I'm just going to smooth this out down here. And I'm going to come back up with my higher resolution. And just kind of step up. Make sure that my surfaces are relaxed. right and so that's the easiest way to get your surfaces back to normal right and then I'll come in 
and let's say I want you know this to be sharp right so I'll use SK trim to really um, define those edges and then often where I want like on this one I want this to be a clean transitional curve now it needs a little bit of sculpting right here smooth and I always use smooth stronger I'll come in and I'll actually lay that in right SK trim it SK trim from the other direction right does that make sense Um, so Pedro does that help answer that question right I use um, uh, Sakaki Kaoru's brushes I like his brush set a lot and there are like a handful of them that I really use. He has a really great bundle that includes all kinds of stuff. When I give my brushes and my user interface out, I include a couple of his brushes, but I always ask people to go and donate to him because his brushes are awesome. Cool. Are you going off a of concept for this? Uh, no, this started out as one thing and then we talked and fuddled and I mean, here, let's see, let's go back here and see where this is at. Um, did I just lose everything? No, I'm like, what just happened here? <laughs> what am I doing? No, that's not the right model. Where's my model that I was just, oh, it's here. There we go. Uh, it started out geometric, and then I wasn't happy with what it was doing, so now I'm trying something else. And, no, nothing real, uh, nothing real concrete. I'm just futzing off as usual. I have a couple projects that I kind of brought with me which are actually pretty concrete that I was going to share with you guys today but we're going to have to do it first week in January I guess because it was not working my uh, drives aren't registering for some reason I do not understand but there it is Yeah, we went from kind of facety to geekery. Cool, I'm glad that helped. And I'll probably clean this up a little later too, so you can see that as well.
and because I only have a a, um, a single I have a million poly dynamesh so there are no subdivisions on this so I'm not going to get very deep into this model I'm just going to try to I had to remesh it so while I'm in this dynamesh I'm going to decide if I need to do anything that is um, um, dynameshy like bridge or you know some of the things like that so that's why I'm still futzing in in the dynamesh and not remeshing yet but I'm going to remesh here soon I think that the only I'm going to have to blow some holes And I want to do that before I remesh. Let's fill that in a little lower. I don't mind that. But let us do this. Duplicate. Turn that off. Let's actually turn this one into a sphere. Close enough to spit on. Turn on Sculptures Pro. You know, I I have to kind of agree with you there, my brother. <laughs> it's it has been uh, an interestingly. Um, kind of a crappest year in a lot of ways. It really seems that I had to deal with a bunch of buffoonery, I guess you could say. I think I want this to come all the way through. Yeah, this was a frustrating year on lots and lots of fronts as far as I'm concerned. And so, I want these to kind of be, so by taking this here, we can determine what the inside, you know, the holes that we're cutting are doing. So we're just going to do a little shaping here so these are concrete shapes they're not just mess you have to admit I had to deal with a bunch of jackasses this year that put me behind schedule in lots of ways But have good momentum going into this year, so I have I have high hopes for this year. And let's no, 
know, do we want any of that to come out? <clears throat> mm, let's punch a hole right here. So we're going to grab snake hook and pull that out. Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. No, I feel I feel optimistic about this coming up here, I do. But pro, you you definitely <laughs> You know, when you go through that, you're just like, all right, <laughs> I'm still breathing, so screw it's got to be okay. So next week, I'm critiquing, but since it's New Year's Eve Eve, I might bring a bottle of champagne, and then I'm going to be doing New Year's Eve Eve critiques. <laughs> Not implying that I'm going to get drunk online. Much. No. <laughs> All right. I think we may be getting to that point. Um, I would say no, but it doesn't hurt. I mean, I think that what drawing skills give you is the ability to interpolate three dimensions into two dimensions, and that skill set definitely helps. But I mean, I haven't, I haven't been drawing in, oh my god, a couple decades since I've really really done much two-dimensional work um so it's by no means needed it doesn't hurt um yeah no i mean i'm a i'm a sculptor so you know i've been a sculptor all my life so um i think that having sculpting skills the thing is this is at the end of the day you have to be able to look at something and convert it into 2d because this is not 3d this is two dimensions um and we're perceiving a three-dimensional space um but this isn't real this is an artificial three-dimensional space so you know in that context the skill of being able to interpolate into two dimensions is helpful now being able to take two dimensions and have the perception of three dimensions is a completely different skill um, but I think they cross over fairly well Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't I, I don't see it getting much worse. If it did, I have to admit that would be horrifying. Cause this was a tough one. This one this one pushed my parameters of being a passive person. I uh I went through a phase where I had uh some violence issues and uh 
I, I, I worked very hard to remove myself from the environment in which guns and knives and things were involved in my everyday life. And I worked very hard to become a much more passive, not, you know, go run things over with cars kind of person. And I think I succeeded greatly. But I'll tell you what, this year, they kept dragging me back. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, Holy hell, how can things be this whacked? Very easily, actually. <laughs> All right, let's make that subtractive. We'll make that start. That's, that should be start. Why are you acting? Oh, there's the arrow. Hmm. Wow, I have so much room, I can actually see the arrow. That's awesome. And now we go Boolean folder. Boop. And this should have my holes in it. Hey, look at that. It has holes in it. And Sculptures Pro, some of this back and out. Turn symmetry on. Now I tell you, ever since I decided that I needed to own what I was doing, and so I haven't been taking, you know, I'm not, I haven't been out there looking for a job, but been doing a lot less freelance work and really trying to get to a place where I really have ownership in the work that I'm doing. It means I have to deal with people with money because, well, if I had money, I wouldn't have the problems. You know, I wouldn't, I could just pay someone to be my manager and I could move forward that way. Uh, I've discovered once again that most people with money make me want to kill them. I just, I've never, I've never dealt with a bigger group of just absolute jackasses in my life. I mean, people are getting worse. And I know that everybody, you know, who gets old is like, oh, those kids. <laughs> I don't understand that rock and roll stuff. But, you know what I mean? It's like, Dude, you couldn't behave like people behave now. Ten years ago, you'd never work. You'd never go out on a date. You'd never have friends. You, you just couldn't do it. And now, you know, everything's just completely screwed as far as civility goes. And um, it's crazy. It's really weird to me because... You know, sadly, I'm someone who believes that truth is actually something. You know, it's not a whose truth, what truth. You know, and I think integrity is a big deal. And uh, I realize I'm, or I feel like an idiotic dinosaur that believes in things that, you know, I might as well say that, you know, UFOs landed in my backyard that someone has integrity, you know. <laughs> I think the, there's more of a chance of finding a UFO than that. And I don't know, that's so insanely frustrating to me that everyone that I've been dealing with last year, I mean, everyone knew that I've been dealing with last year really turned out to be I mean, I, I met new people that are wonderful, but I mean, business-wise, people suck. <laughs> That's all I can say. People are horrible. It just blows me away. So yeah, let's, let's hope that things get better because my patience level is shot. Shot. I'm done. Mm.
start. You can put start there. That just prevents those from becoming involved in the thing. Turn those off. Turn that on. Make that negative. Boolean. You can do it. Yeah. I I was a traditional sculptor for at least 20 years before I touched anything digital. At least 20 years. I started selling my sculpture in 1978. 79 was a much better year, but 78 is when I first started selling my sculpture. Now, to be fair, I was selling my sculpture at the art fair around the lake, and I was a little kid, but I mean, it worked. I, I, actually, I was making damn good money as a kid. <laughs> But yes, I, I started as a traditional sculptor. Hmm. Let's do this while we're doing it. Do, 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 do. Append. Nope. Here, let me get rid of those because it's annoying. Actually, let's bring that up into there. We'll make that a negative. We are going to delete that. Turn that on. Boop. Boolean folder. Boop. So. That's not bad. All of this is riding above the finger. That's it. very important. So that is good. This needs to be. So let's delete this. Because I want some here. We can, let's at least put that up here so it's not in my way. Because I might need to go to the restroom again. Let's take this. Let us take our mandrel. Let us take our mandrel and flip it. And this allows me to go transparency. Because I want this. It's important that this is touching the ring finger here. because we need enough surface contact to create friction so it doesn't roll around. So let us make sure that we get that. But I like this tip not touching the finger. We might even bring that up more in a bit. Yeah, when I was a kid, there was no such thing as digital sculpting. <laughs> Hell, when I was an adult, there was no such thing as digital sculpting. I'll tell you what, I'm glad there is now. I like it. It's fun. And it's not going to give me silicosis. Mm -hmm. 
Gotta walk the dog. Oh, hell no. <laughs> All right, I'll let you walk the dog. Just this once. Yay, yay, yay. I don't think it'll boolean a flipped. You know what? I don't know if I have ever tried the boolean a flipped object. Let us quick save this in case something stupid happens because I'm trying something stupid. So let's see. Boom, ba -dum, ba -dum. Boolean folder. Did that just work? You learn something new every day, don't you? You can Boolean. I don't know what that noise was. It sounded like, <laughs> like great. All I need is this place to catch on fire. No, please. Um, either send a picture or upload it to um, my Dropbox folder. Wow, it's 2 o'clock. No, getting close to 2 o'clock. Do you have a link to images of it or um, did you upload it to my folder? Oh, shit. Keeping symmetry on is a big deal. <laughs> when you want things to be symmetrical, at least. Now it's a lot more Twitch. That's funny. Earlier today, man, everything was YouTube. It weirded me out because YouTube's usually the the lowest count, you know, thing. And it was like YouTube away. The history brush is awesome. Hmm. Well, we didn't need history brush. <laughs> I guess I went a little too far. Try that again. History brush is awesome. <laughs> oh, no, damn it. I turned symmetry off. <laughs> Hmm. 
Um, yeah, no, just show me. Um, like I said, if you want to upload it to... Do you have the link to my Dropbox for uploading, or do you just want to upload an image? How would you like to go about it? Hello, kind and gentle folk. How are we doing Christmas, Christmas Eve? I guess technically it's Christmas Eve now, isn't it? Um, well, Lone, just tell me, tell me where it is and I'll be happy to look at it for you. For those of you who are just, <laughs> wow, that, that was really, uh, <laughs> that was a bad articulation of anything. For those of you just joining us, uh, feel free to ask any questions. I'm here for you. Sitting here and watching me work on something I'm just fiddling about with, but if you all have specific questions or desires for answers or any other weirdness just tell me Luna is going to show me a model or something at some point here mm <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to remesh this. All right. Was it of a drawing or is it of a model? I mean, I, I'll gladly look at either. But if it's a model, you can upload it to my Dropbox and we can actually look at the model. If it's a drawing, just send me a link. Cool. So um, do you have a link to the drawing or do you want to upload the drawing as well? How would you like to show it to me? Yeah, well, here, I'll just post a bunch of links right now anyway. So for those of you who next week is going to be critique um, week, I always do critiques on the last Monday of the month. So this is the link to upload to my Dropbox. And you can do that. Um, yeah, yeah, no, just either upload it to there or send me a link to the picture and I'd be happy to look at it so that's that now I get asked for my uh, user interface all the time so this is my user interface and my brushes so everyone has my brushes all right so that is the link to the Dropbox to download my user interface as well as my brush folder and the mod dirty blue material 
but this is a link to Sakaki Karu's um, Gum Road. And I put that there because I use um, yeah, four, four or five of his brushes. And he does have a gum road for his brushes. And I, um, but as you can see, it's, it's a donation thing. He's not really asking money for it. But his entire pack comes with a bunch of other stuff like the armatures, um, the anime, the hand armature, and uh, all of his brushes and donate to him if you download mine because I'm giving you some of his brushes but this is the full pack of brushes and a bunch of other armature stuff um, but it's it's good to support the people who put their time and energy in that so like I said you can see that he's not asking for money for it but I think that it's nice if we do support the people who are making the tools that we then in turn can make money off of so uh, loan either um, upload the image to that Dropbox to the ZBrush TSW or send me a link to your image and we'll look at it there. So remember that next week is critique week. And I will be the last ZBrush live stream of the year. We will join you soon thereafter, obviously. But I'll be the last stream of the year. Dun, dun, dun. anybody have any questions while we're waiting for loan to upload an image if anyone has any questions about anything feel free to ask I'm here for you or if we're just doing a little holiday lurking that's okay I just don't know how compelling my yabbering is at the moment. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I must admit, I hope it's not too cold outside. How cold is it? Mm. High, mid 30s. That's not too cold my back's feeling tight i'm gonna get into the hot tub tonight before i go to bed hot tubs are mind boggling bog mind bogglingly good tools for your body They are super good. <laughs> ah, my nose. My nose is making me crazy. No problem. I'm in no hurry. I'm here. I'm going nowhere anytime soon.
as long as people have questions I'm here Okay, do I need to blow any more holes into this sucker anywhere? I think that's okay. So now it's time for remeshing. So. Let us detect edges. I'm going to target count. Let's go a little lower than that. I don't have anything real pokey, so let's let's go to 2,000. Z remesh. Oops. Nope. That's going to be weird. That's not what I wanted. I guess I can push a board, can I? Yes. All right. And because we want this symmetrical, I'm going to do X and Z. Z remesh, detect edges, 2000. My coconut water isn't cold at all. Lukewarm coconut water. Not the best stuff in the world. That might be a fail. What did I just do with my stylus? And there it is. All right, so as we can see, we're symmetrical. Let's look and see if there's anything wonky. I don't see anything wonky, so let's go ahead and lower this bad boy all the way down. Hmm. Before we do that, though, let's back up. We need to go, there we go, back up right there, hit control, and now forward, come on, now, we're at 12,000, is that what, let's just make sure, no, there we go, all right. That looks okay. There are no weird, crimpy spots. Divide it up some. Project history. You can do it. Oh no, hold on. Escape. Yeah, wait for program. Crap us. No, well, well, all right. It did it. Um, you'll notice I have symmetry turned on. When you're projecting history, sometimes symmetry screws that up, so turn symmetry off before you do that. But held up okay, so. No complaints. Let's turn that off. Let us turn symmetry on. We're going to divide this one more time. All right. Uh, 
Oh, we didn't want Sculptures Pro on anyway. Okay. Oop, we have some weird projection thing going on there. Sometimes projections get weird. All right, higher res. Make sure that you come in and continue to tap high res. You see that it's going to try to retain some of that memory. So at a point like this, this seems like this is a bad idea. But you will be very thankful for that at other times. OK. So we are now about to start working on this a little bit more. So I'm going to find that you want to go back to history. So I'm going to do a gesture here and a gesture here. So I have this as my base level or my history anchor level. Undo once. Hold down control, tap your. Hold down control. Hmm. Try that again. There we go. Undo once. Hold down control. Tap your orange guy. Go back. OK. So why that becomes a thing, sometimes if you just hit your history anchor on the scene you're on or on the frame you're on without going back one it sometimes doesn't progress in the right way it's odd and I don't know if it's designed that way or if that was just a bug on mine but I just do it because it worked so um, now we have that, that position to be our history anchor and so if I come back here and say hey I want to work on this surface because I want this to have striations that go through as a pattern and I want it to go all the way through that now I go history brush turn symmetry off and I can come right back to um, where we were, but I want my focal link to be sharper. Right? And there you go. So now you just come back in and do that. And now your pattern stays through and everybody's happy. but I don't want to do that. So let's go back. I haven't forgot your wolf, so anytime you want to, uh, you know, not hurrying you either, but just because I've gone on to talk to other things, I'm still more than willing to do that for you.
<coughs> Excuse me. That was coming all night. My oh, shit. Hey, Cake, how we doing? Merry Christmas Eve. Right at this point, everyone is at Christmas Eve, I think. Maybe there are some islands out there that that aren't Hawaii's. I don't know. I should just be quiet before it sounds silly. <laughs> My capacity in time zones is pathetic. Wow. Thank you. I don't get many blessings. Yeah, this has gone through lots of uh, iterations at this point. I have no idea what I'm doing. I never really view this stream as uh, an accomplishment stream. Uh, I'm very myopic. So when I really, really work, I don't talk a lot. So, uh, when I'm uh, when I'm streaming, I tend to stream to answer your all's questions as opposed to getting stuff done. It's funny. I think that there are a lot of people who don't believe that I actually can accomplish things in <laughs> reasonable time frames because if they watch my stream, I don't really accomplish I can work on the same thing for like eight hours and get absolutely nowhere I find it quite entertaining <laughs> once again for those of you just joining us I see that there are more numbers um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I'm actually here for you. So, uh, yeah. Ask away, and I'm here to resolve any issues you have. In my limited scope. <laughs> if you're asking me about unwrapping UVs, you're probably going to be very disappointed in me. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Did you find the picture? Is there a way to get it? Oh my gosh, stop. Ah. The barometer must be shipping or something because my sinuses are starting to blow up. My friend um, Susan at one point was kind of giggling and trying to make me join um, 
what's it tinder is that the dating thing and i was laughing at her saying you know that's completely asinine and while i we were sitting there she was in my room while i was working and she's like no 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 and she took a picture of the back of my head and showed the screen and she's like hey if you like this view we're going to be a perfect couple <laughs> if you don't yeah you're going to be bummed because it's all you're going to see is the back of my head <laughs> hello hello oh you sent it to dropbox okay let me um Hmm, I have to put these in older. Let's see what we got. So is that um So you're trying to Okay, so tell me what we're looking at here. Is this the head, shoulders, and arms? Or is this a face? No, no, it's, it's not necessarily about the quality of drawing. It's just perspective can be interesting sometimes. So I'm just trying to figure out what we're looking at. So when you're saying you're trying to get this kind of armor, is this like, um, is this a head, these are shoulders? Tell me what we're looking at. So this is where to go. Is that it? No. So that's like one sec, where to go. Okay, so oh I see. There is no head. This is just the torso. Okay. You're like, no, there's a head. I'm like, <laughs> so, hold on, let's. That's a bicep, right? Is that what I'm seeing? So the, the neck hole's like there, and this is... And this is just a stock. This is pectoral plates, I guess, I'm guessing. Are these part of the design? Is this like a swirl? Well. Let's do this. I'm sure that there's a female figure in here that we can easily jump to. I thought she was funny because she's like, I feel like this a lot.
So. that to be above Shoop. right that's your connection line Skirt. Mm -mm. Extract. Right. Let's delete this crap because we don't need it. Wait, did I just... Shrink. Accept. Okay. Let those get rid of that. And just left seams so you could have the parts but let us now go back to Julie here so now we have shoulders look at that We have that. Hey, Pablo, how are we doing? All right, Chingo, you can ask uh, any question you like. He just had a question about armor, so we're just going to play with this for a second as well. But ask away, and I'm sure that we can figure out a way to answer your question. Yeah.
And let us extract that. Okay, so now we have our basic parts. Move back face masking because we want this to sit. It feels like some poor itchy acid up my nose. Topological not a group. Why are those not are they touched? Damn it, they are touched. <coughs> Poo. <coughs> Separate set there we go. Ha ha. a little excitable. So I think that, you know, there you go. You know, you're probably, this figure has weird boobs. But, you know, you're probably dealing with something that unless you've got some really interesting armors, you're probably going to wind up with a much more of a general shape around the bust. I never understood what this bottle. Just got an odd fish mouth. Sorry, I've got to do something about that because that. <laughs> what are you talking? What? Oh, it has layers. <laughs> they call it, that's fine. What? Don't jump. Okay. <laughs> Armor face. There. 
I don't have to look at that goofy ass mouth anymore. Alright. Okay, so you know, I think in a lot of ways that's your basic form, right? You know, how to make it a female shape, I think that is your answer for the most part. How can you make it more opaque? So my masking tool, why my masking tool probably is more opaque is because I changed the focal length. So hold down the space bar, then hit the control button. And you see my focal length is at negative 100. I think it starts out down here in like the 50 range. And so you get soft edges. Um, Hold down spacebar, then hit control, come over and make it negative 100. And then there's just no fall off, so it's just sharp. So that's probably how that is. Uh, it depends on how much time and energy you put into it. It depends on, um, have you ever used 3D programs before? Um, with concerted effort, you can learn the basics probably be proficient in a few weeks a month and then it's just learning how to tune the program to do what you want it to do and then that's the real depth you know of where where you can take it but it's not i mean you have to get over the user interface the user interface is a little bizarre and so um, once you get used to the interface being weird, um, or it's unlike other 3D programs, let me put it that way. So if you think it's going to, you know, there, there are some things that are just a little strange if you're used to other programs. But it doesn't take long. It just, it just takes work, you know. I mean, I teach a class that is, uh, you know, it's a 10 week class, but it's only two hours a week. So, um, you know, in that context, you're only, you know, it's 10 hours. And I have people who are perfectly competent from never opening ZBrush. And then I have other people who can't navigate still. So, you know, it, it, it's completely, it's tricky. Uh, it's not rocket science if you really wrap your head around it. Trying to put the core in the middle is my main problem, so it doesn't look funky. When you say the core, you mean the abdominal muscles? Well, first of all, you're going to have a split in your armor there, so they can move. Um, Is this what you mean by the core? You're talking about the abdominal muscles. Um, give me some of that. This is so thin. No. My brush is also turned up very high.
assuming for the most part. I mean, unless you're trying to just make fantasy fantasy where your breasts aren't going to be very well defined. You know, they're going to try to... Because trying to hammer out breasts is a nightmare. So I'd assume your breasts going to be fairly flat. Now the circle in the drawing is part of the armor itself. Okay, so let's... Okay. Shingo, what, did that answer your question? You said you had two questions. Was there another one? I don't know where your neckline is. It might have made that a little low. But, I mean... Oh, no, you can change the sensitivity. You can change the intensity. So if you notice, I just have mine set at 25, but you can set it at 100. Or... You can set it at like three, but for masking without, um, without the, the pressure sensitivity really comes into, well, the pressure sensitivity you can set, you notice I'm, no, oh, no, hold on. Right, so that's the pressure sensitivity right if you're just doing it soft you can do it soft you do it hard you do it hard but with your outside edges with there being no fall off you know your um the intensity stays pretty dark i guess but you know you, your pressure sensitivity is you know your tablet sensitivity so as far as pressure goes that's the tablet does that make sense? Okay, so you have the power source. Now, in your drawing, oops, are the dots, are they on all the pieces? Right. Or is that just an illustration of the... <laughs> Sorry, I made her head look a little bit like a weird old wolf bear thing, but I just couldn't take it anymore. That weird open mouth was just weirding me out. <laughs> I can't do it. I mean, I understand why I was made that way. I'm just... <laughs>
Okay, so they are actually on the part. <laughs> yeah that was a while ago <laughs> uh, I figured that um, well I usually go this late honestly Take the actual elbow into consideration. And something like that. Um, no, no. Pressure sensitivity works on every brush. Right? I mean, this is the carve brush. Let's do that, right? So if I'm soft, you can change the sense right there's soft and there's deep right so the pressure sensitivity is not per brush um there is um tablet yeah here's um here is uh your oh Jesus I'm having talking issues all of a sudden so here is the individual settings for pressure setting for the tablet but um, you're not really getting pressure sensitivity here right because when I say pressure sensitivity I mean I'm going from light to heavy right now, if you change your Z intensity, I'm going from light 
heavy, but you can barely see it, right? So I guess that your intensity, hold on, let's go to the body. Well, here, we can do it here in the back. There aren't that many strokes, right? So your Z intensity is here. And if you turn that to 100, it's there, right? But that's not the pressure sensitivity. That's more like flow, like if you have on your brushes in Photoshop, flow or fill, I guess fill, um, is intensity. So I guess, are you, yes, you can, and you can do it with masking, um, but I don't, I'm not really seeing um, the need for it in masking. You know, I mean, are you trying to get, you know, a transition? So when you come in and you, you can see that it does, it is depth sensitive on the translucency of the mask brush, but what are you trying to accomplish with the mask brush with the pressure sensitivity, I guess I'm asking. Because the intensity with masking isn't really the same thing, right? Um, we can turn Z intensity all the way down and you can see it's going to be masking because masking is either kind of on or off. And that's where the pressure sensitivity on the, right, that's at zero and it's still the mask, right? You can turn it to 100 and it's still, it's the pressure sensitivity that is giving you the transition in tone of the mask. Are you looking for a fade? Is that the point? Yeah, but the custom brush, a custom brush isn't going to resolve the issue with masking in particular. Because masking is sort of an on or off thing. And you can have fading edges. So I like my edges sharp, right? Because I want to come in here and make sure that what I'm masking is masking. Um, but you can make masking by coming here, changing your focal length you know, it has soft edges. Um, right, see, it's just, <laughs> it's just where the hardness is. Um, and you can see how that's softer, right? But it's still, it's your pressure that is changing that, right? So that's super soft, that's super hard. But you can see it's soft, soft. That's why, I mean, I tend to like a sharp brush. I want edges. I usually keep it in the 90s, like, and that gives me just a little bit less chatter on the outside edge, but that's a sharp mask. Have a good one, pro. Um, oops. Okay, but can I ask what your, what's the end goal, right? I mean, are you saying, like, you know, that's the opacity, right? And so if we go to clay tubes and do something over it. Oh, I turned that down to zero. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you're only blocking a little. You know what I mean? Why, why do you want the opacity to be different or to change? Because it kind of, I mean, unless you're doing a transitional fade, um, I don't see what you're gaining out of having 
like a, a 30% mask. Well, if you want it to be opaque all the time, once again, it's still sort of a, you know, here's my mask, right? I mean, that is, it's opaque. Like you get out to the outside edges where you, you lift off, you can lift off. It just, it's just being solid with your hand because as long as, especially if you don't have, um, um, soft edges, you know, I come in here and I don't have to worry about it being translucent as long as, I mean, that is opaque. You know what I mean? That's not, there's no fade in there. It's just your crossover is where a lot of people blow it. And if you make, if you make this a hundred, it has no fade. That's a sharp edge, right? But masking is pressure sensitive so if you're soft hand or soft you know but if you have any kind of pressure if your pressure sensitivity is set at any kind of unless your pressure sensitivity is set at super super soft or technically it would be super super hard um you know i'm just doing pressure normal pen pressure and you're not going to get any fade well i mean if you want to make armor parts you mean like this one sec Or do you mean for the extracting? Are we talking about extracting? How you get the weird edges? So. go to extract I mean you can where the resolution of your extraction comes from is the resolution of your mesh so let's delete that right stuff on this layer delete so are you talking about you can but once again, it's with the masking, masking brush in particular, well, I guess you could just crank it up. But I mean, I don't, I don't see what you're necessarily gaining out of that. Um, Yeah, see, use global Z intensity. Oh, well, it's a curve. I guess you can just drop your fall off completely if you're in your mask brush. Hold on. Nope, that's mask pen. Um, yeah, that's what we're looking at. I mean, I guess here you can change your fall off. Hmm. 
scheiße. So reset. Yeah. Let's see, you're still going to have tablet pressure. See, if I still barely touch it, you're still going to get pressure at, at, at both extremes. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, what you're saying is you just want it to be 100% all the time. So you don't get that little edge fade right there. So it's just all the time. It's, I'd say it press harder. <laughs> uh. I guess what I'm trying to figure out is what you're not getting. What is it that you're getting that you don't want? Or what are you getting? Or what are you not getting that you want? I don't learn the first time. Obviously, it's getting late. If I'm making goofy errors like that. Right. <laughs> it sucks because it hurts so bad. Ugh. Today was the day my allergies went the hell off. I don't know of a way. Well, I mean, I guess you could use a mouse. Um, 
because a mouse is either 100% on or 100% off. There's no fade in a mouse. If you're using a tablet, I just, I'm not seeing a way to get that. But I mean, I mean, do you have your pressure sensitivity set really hard or something? Because I mean, like, I, I just don't see how, you know, that's an issue. Right? I mean, it just sounds like you're... <clears throat> right, you know, I don't... I'm not understanding what you're... Something like that. But if you... With curves... I'm so confused. What the hell are you talking about? I mean, it, well, if you let go control, you let go a mask. Right? I mean... I let go control. You're... You're no longer in mask, so I don't under. I'm not quite understanding that. It could just be vernacular, or whatever. I mean, I'm not. I just don't understand what you're not getting by just holding down on control, right? I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a pain or you know a smartass or anything. I'm. You also have to understand I've been doing this for a while. I mean, tonight. So I might just be getting loopy that I'm not understanding what's going on or what the desired result is. Because, I mean, I'm not pressing hard there at all. Right? I mean... Lone Wolf, does that help at all? I mean, if you take a screen cap of that, I think that might give you a starting place at least of being able to, you know, define the, the shape. He threw me for a loop on the mask thing. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what... <laughs> I think I might just be getting tired. I'm like, I'm not understanding. Because, I mean, I, you don't have to, like, press super hard to get it. I mean, let's put it this way. I've never thought about it this way. So, I mean, I guess the other thing that you can do, like you're doing this, right, and you're masking, a way to make sure that it is, see how I have a little softness there? If you go into your mixing mask palette you can also do this with key sh keystrokes but i'm just showing you this um, if you go sharpen mask basically it's removing any of that fade stuff right it's sharpening the edges so how you can sharpen mask out here is if you hold control 
and you tap inside there, see how it's getting softer? Control Alt, it's getting harder, right? So sharpen mask is once you have a mask, if you go down Control Alt, it'll sharpen it. So maybe that is um, kind of what you're hunting for, but you know, honestly, I don't. I'm not seeing what you can't get out of just using the mask, right? You know, if you're. Right? You can tap it and see it'll get softer. Control Alt, it gets harder. And I mean, that is. What the hell is that? There we go. Right. And that's that garbage mesh, but I don't think I have a chainmail brush. Nope, that's the wrong damn thing. I don't seem to have one. Nope, but Wait, do we have chain mail? Wait. Pixelogic may very well have chain mail alpha. Let's see. worth a try we just know that their alphas are good alphas that's Save image to desktop. 
Now, let's see if this works. How did I do this? Let us go to Extractor Brush. Let us go to Alpha. Let's go to Import. Let us go to Desktop. All right, so once again, on this we are going to want to remove our focal shift so it's not quite as soft on the edges. Turn our Z intensity down. There you go. Now you have chainsaw midriff. <laughs> or chain mail. <laughs> chainsaw. <laughs> I'm working here. Is a start. <laughs> um, well, honestly, I teach classes. I've been doing it 15 years. I think that um, there are a couple people now. There's one. God, what's his name? From what I understand, he has some good basic courses. If you ask me next week, I'll tell you, or if you email me, um, uh, no, that's at, sorry, I got British keyboard set up because arg. Um, <laughs> hey man, off my back, <laughs> but it's pretty, especially if it scoops out. Get really little shame, so. Um, do me a favor and email me and we can Skype and talk about it. Hopefully by June, I'll have my education platform set up. Feasibly early next year, I'll run a live course again um, while I'm waiting on getting all my modules done. So we may run a live class early in the year as well. But um, I can't think of the other guy who has been getting good response for his basic stuff. Uh, he's a jeweler who did it. Um, shit. I'm not not remembering his name on purpose. Uh, hell. Contact me and I'll get you that information. If that's cool. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, I'll, I'll start. A, I think I'm going to do a live class early in the year. And then I'm trying to get all the basic modules done before um, JCK, because I want to launch at JCK, at least for the basic membership stuff. Yeah, Chainsaw Metro, <laughs> that'd be rough. Um, well, hopefully that, whoa, what the hell? Oh. 
Ah, brush fail. Let's go back and look at that crease. My slash brush. Yep, set it at 70. That's why that was acting so weird. That's not supposed to be set that. And with that brush, we gave her peacock tail. All right. Yeah, I mean, if you just take a screen cap of that, I'll set it. I'll let it sit for a second. And at least that gives you the shape of how, you know, someone with hips, where armor is going to sit and kind of, I don't know. Hopefully that'll give you a rough idea. Now oh, it's almost four. All right, guys. Um, boop. If does anyone have any other questions before I kind of wrap this up? Because it's getting on to be four. And not that I have any big Christmas Eve plans. Um, <laughs> they look like little dog bones. That's funny. Uh, yeah. I'm obviously getting tired because I'm. I feel like I probably frustrated frustrated you she can go about uh, <laughs> about masking sorry I'm not trying to frustrate you I'm just trying to wrap my head around it and I'm just not understanding what you're not getting uh, but that's because it's almost 4 a.m. here so my uh, my poor brain is missing it Extractor is a new um, brush set of tools in ZBrush. So, what's really nice about it is it provide it does a very nice um, uh, follow. So here, here. Let's say that I am doing. I think his little scar thing was the works the best so I've been working on my model do, 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 do. and I have made the shape that I really like This has edges on it, so that's not going to, let me, can't actually, I don't know why I'm being silly about this. I've been working on my model and I got this shape that I really like. Woohoo, I made this great shape. Well, now I want this shape on other parts of my model and this works with like the demo they used are like scars and things like that so if you want some things to repeat but it's nice with architectural architectural elements as well so now I come in here I have to make sure hold on turn symmetry off 
I have to make sure that my brush is big enough to cover it. All right. So now I come in here and I go from brush. And you see I have this blue thing. And that line is showing us where it starts and where it finishes. And it extracts the map. Oh crap. Here we go again. Hold on. Escape. Escape. I did this all last week too. I completely screwed my uh, menu. I didn't push the extractor brush first. Okay. See how it gives us that. Um, but that's the wrong brush. Clay tube should just be a square. But did it screw my clay tube? Oh no. I didn't blow it this time. Okay, so hit the extractor brush. Then we go from brush, come over here. I drag this like this. It'll extract. You can do it. So now you see it here. So now when I have my extractor brush selected, I can come out here and it lays that on. But what's nice about it, unlike um, unlike an alpha, and you can't put an alpha there, but unlike the alpha, it's active. So, you know, that was a straight shape, right? But I actually want it to be more curved and work with the thing. So you can see that it becomes a, a pretty good dynamic tool for trying to get and you know, it'll repeat. Does that make sense? And that's just a, it does a bunch of stuff, but that's sort of a good example of, you know, what it does. Or at least I hope that's a good example of what it does. And it's pretty cool too because it's pressure sensitive as well. So you can start and do it small and then increase your pressure. And they'll get bigger. And you can see it does a pretty good job of like going around corners and stuff. Some of your, it'll start to chatter if it gets too tight right see it chatter how it drags on itself but if you're doing nice you know curves it's good and it's repeat is if you remember the brush so let's say you no know this is going to repeat we go to extractor go from brush no oh, hold on I have to make my brush bigger. You notice that it turned that off. So extractor from brush. When I touch, you'll see that straight line. Where the hell's the straight line? Normally there's a straight line. <laughs> okay, from brush. See that line? That's where the pattern begins and ends. So I wanna go past that, right? And I'll make a new alpha pattern here. It's right up here. There we go. Um, and you can see that's where, so on this one, you notice there's more space between them. 
So let's say you have developed a repeating pattern, right? So I want not at 70. But then we're going to come there, right? So we have these two lines. So, once again, make my brush bigger, go to Extractor, make sure it's a little bigger. From Brush, I'm going to start on that line, turn Symmetry off. I'm going to start on that line. And then I'm going to end on that line. That was my extractor dance. And now, as we drag that out, you'll see the lines, right, repeat. So you can be pretty anal, get your repetitive pattern to right. So that's one function of extractor, but that's a good one. Did it not go to Twitch? Yeah, that's it. Oh shit, I didn't. <laughs> I even typed it in wrong. I'm a jackass. Yes. NXT, that is that is my email. Tomas Mu Yep, that's it. Pizarro. Earlier it was eh, I'm not whatever. I don't have any answers on that one. So, are there any other questions? Yeah, I, that's weird. I don't know. Hey, got a caller. How's it going? Merry Christmas Eve. Bizarro. I have no answers. Ugh. All right. Um, if there are not any more questions, I might be wrapping up here because it's pushing four o'clock here. Anybody have... Any questions before I go? Anything you'd like wrapped up on this Christmas Eve morning? It's so funny, these were such nice shapes earlier. Now they just look like goofy ass dog bones. <laughs> You mean here? In preferences 
tablet or in brush? I'm just saying I wasn't seeing any any visible difference in after changing them. But <laughs> I'm glad you found your answer. I apologize that I was in no mental condition to solve it for you. <laughs> uh, why is oh when I was futzing with this I changed my focal length sadly. There we go. What the hell? Oh, see, I did, I did screw clay tubes when I did the extractor. Sometimes it'll like extract will extract the brush, and, and uh, you got to make sure when you do from from brush that it's uh, that you're on extractor. See how my clay tubes has the weird sort of negative bump in there and that's sort of the shape that was happening early I don't know it happens okay cool Yes, Extractor is now part of 2020. It's the new, it's a new feature in um, the new ZBrush or the latest ZBrush. Oh, it's super fun. It really works well. You just, um, just don't do it to other brushes or you get dumb, you get stupid crap like this <laughs> this isn't what I want with my clay tubes <laughs> I actually use my clay tubes brush so do not save my brushes at this point uh, ma -ma -ma -ma. did everyone who has been asking for my user interface get it did you get that oh, our link's not going to work now why were they working earlier? Oh, hell, I don't know. Don't have answers, obviously. Okay. If there are not, I mean, if you have other questions, I'll answer them. But if we're done, I think I'm going to wrap up. And I will see you next Monday. I will be here. I am the last stream of 2019. Um, There's my stream. And so I could feasibly go for three days. There'll be no one streaming. <laughs> okay. Let's see if these links work. Because they were going up earlier. For some reason they didn't. So let's get Notepad on here. So this is the Dropbox. That's cool. I, I, I just, I guess I get it opaque all the time, I think, but that's cool. I'll look at it. Okay, that's Dropbox. So there's a zip file that has my brushes, my interface, and um, Mod Dirty Blue. Now, this is... Sakaki's Gum Road. And if you download this, or if you download my brush set, I would appreciate it if you go to Sakaki Karu's um, 
and I'm sure I'm mangling the pronunciation, the pronunciation. But this is his Gumroad. That's the link there. Um, if you donate just a little bit to it, because I, I use a few of his brushes in my brush pack, but I mean, he's not asking for anything here, but support your artist, even if it's a buck, you know, whatever. But download his full package because he has a bunch of other stuff like ham, posable ham armatures and um, his uh, Japanese figurine that he uses a lot as his, he does a lot of stuff with Japanese toys. Um, but I'd appreciate it if you download my brushes that you go to him and download his brushes and actually give him a buck or two or whatever you feel is a fair price because he made fantastic brushes and he's an incredible artist and he actually streams here and um, yeah support him and then the third thing is this boom boom <clears throat> boom yeah and that is the upload oh shisa did i just kill that oh no there, never mind okay um and that is the upload link for critiques for next week. So next week is the last Monday of the month. I'll be doing a critique session. So please upload your models to that this week before next week. And we will do a critique session as long as we go. And um, yeah, upload your models for critiques. Download my UI if you want it. Inside that UI are SK brushes. If you feel like a good human, go to his gum road and download his brushes and give him a little money for it because that's nice. And it's Christmas Eve for goodness sake. And yeah, I think I covered all of that. Anything else? I'll try to get my USBs working so my drive show up. I don't even know what I did. It's very frustrating. Kind of makes me crazy. Okay. <laughs> Dices. Anyone? I know I have like a 30 second lag, so I'm going to sit here for a second and stare at the wall. <laughs> I could draw a halo. All right. If there is nothing more, I'd like to thank thank zbrush for letting me stream and being such wonderful awesome badassery um join me on instagram ts riddlesbot join zbrush on instagram uh yeah i don't know merry christmas i guess we could go there right um yeah Merry Christmas. Hope everyone has a good holiday. Uh, I will see you on New Year's Eve Eve, into New Year's Eve. Um, anything else? Anyone? All right. I think we got everything covered. Thank you, everyone. Have a very good holiday. Boop. Stop streaming.